Okay, we are back with another Armenia uh, exit interview. Today we have Lewis, potentially one of the most influential Ooh. people this season. How are you doing today, Lewis? Pretty good, and I'm, that's very flattering. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, but it's 100% true, though, especially like, and your confessionals as well, just all of that in general, easily one of the most influential people this season. I do want to start off and ask you, uh, 24 hours just about after the game has ended, how do you feel? Is it like a relief that you're out of the game or like a withdrawal, like s still wanting to be on Discord all the time? What's your what's your thoughts? <clears throat> yeah, it's it's a little bit like it's a little bit both of those things. Like it's it's almost like uh, I am relieved it's over because it was it was even after I was voted out, it was a very long, like stressful experience. It was really fun, but like, um, there's just a lot to like process and think about. Mm -hmm. Um, I I do like idly check Discord with like almost nothing important going on anymore. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, but like, an another big thing was um, it's just so surreal. I think I've said it to a lot of people, but it's so surreal reading like through Spectator Lounge, um, of like the game that you played and everything like the, the moves that in the moment you feel like you thought out for a while and seemed pretty good. And then people are just roasting you. It, it is like <laughs> a, it is a pretty, uh, it's a weird experience. So I, I feel like a little melancholy about it today, but it's all good. Like, I think a lot of it's funny actually, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Especially the comments from Steve, the moose, I'm sure. I, a specifically him. I, <laughs> It's like it was so funny because he he drafted me to win, right? Mm -hmm. Probably literally because of my Discord name, I'm assuming. But <laughs> um, it, it from what I was reading, it really seemed like there was no bigger critic of my game than him. Mm -hmm. But if anybody else tried to criticize me, he would just jump in and defend me, even if he didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's funny. He was your I biggest enjoyed defense. winning it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so then you, you kind of talked about, uh, you know, you th moves you thought were good at the time and then you read it and it's like maybe they weren't so good. Is there anything that you kind of, if you could go back and had a time machine, could go back and play the game again, what would you do differently? Um, I wouldn't be so liberal with the information that I gave out because I felt like, well, to start with, I don't think I was, just because it was new to me, I don't know if I was doing enough talking the first few rounds mm. um but like once once that once i kind of hit my stride with that um i felt like i played okay up until swap and then when hannah got voted out i felt like i really had nothing to lose and i thought in that moment there's no point in me lying about anything <clears throat> so mm. i'm just gonna try to say stuff that is easily corroborated because it's the truth and hopefully gain credibility with people I'm trying to work with or just potentially work with. And then once things were kind of going better, I never really dropped that mentality. And I felt like I was way, way too trusting with like everybody that I aligned with. Mm -hmm. So I definitely would have been way more, I probably would have talked the same amount, but I've been way less willing to give information to reassure people that I trust them a lot. Um, kind of make them have to prove it just as much as I felt I had to mm -hmm. and um, kind of just keep setting up backdoor options because I felt like once I knew that I was going to get voted out pretty much after I lost that last immunity, I felt like I was just backed up into a corner and I, there was nothing I really could have done at that point mm -hmm. um, because not, no, I, I knew Andrew wasn't going to flip. I kind of had burned bridges with Chumbo game wise. And um and it probably would have had to been Celine because, um, or no, no, she got immunity. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they're definitely not going to flip on Andy. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's tough to, to know, like, how much everybody's connected until, you know, it finally happens and you're feeling like, okay, it's me. So so you're saying you would, yeah, you would, yeah. you would give yourself more options and kind of give out less information than, than you did. Right. And... And also I was, you know, I was already the flipper, right? Mm -hmm. And I knew I wasn't out of the woods yet of the the flipper stigma. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to 
be the flip flopper. You yeah. know what I mean? I didn't want to keep going back and forth because I already knew that I'd most likely well, I read James Confessional. I definitely burned his jury vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, but most likely Rachel's and probably Jonathan's too. Um, I thought if I played a good game, I think Chumbo would have possibly respected that. So mm-hmm. I was like, I have to preserve Pativ votes. Um, but I don't know. I, maybe I should have made a move. Or, you know, originally too, like, that's why I kind of wanted to bring Chumbo. If, I mean, say in a different version of this game, the Holy Trinity alliance was never never a thing. It was just Liv and Selin. Like, in my mind, that four, we just equally piss everybody else off <laughs> so that we have equal vying for jury votes. Mm-hmm. I guess that's what I was seeing when, when I was making the, the moves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you talked about it a little bit. I do want to touch on probably the, the game-defining move was you flipping after that rock draw. What was your... What essentially? Why did you flip? What was your uh, your motive behind that? And just your your thought process in that whole round, to be honest, because there was definitely a lot of a lot of debate on what actually in the spec lounge. There was a lot of debate on what actually happened there, and what what your thought process was, and what really happened that round. So, if you give us a little insight on that, yeah. So i I feel like I tried to be mostly an analytical player i tried to not count in emotions so much but um i think at the start of when i was thinking about doing this it was an emotional thing because i i don't know like and and now i really don't know how how true any of this is and i haven't done enough reading about it yet but you know they had painted so to their credit they had painted james as this like huge villain Mm -hmm. and it it seems to me still that he he was somewhat villainous at the beginning. Again, I can't corroborate that yet. Mm-hmm. But I I just knew some things he had actually said to me personally that were really quick, but they were they honestly were mean. And mm-hmm. I was like, man, that like like I actually like like these people, even though we're, I'm not working with them. And mm-hmm. I was like, that really sucks. Like and and so it kind of just left like a like a weird feeling. Like if he's just gonna straight up say this stuff about them and they're they seem to be decent people Mm -hmm. then he could easily be saying this about me in in a few votes um so that's when i started thinking about it um when i went into the merge i felt like i was very much so on the bottom or at least could have been and i ended up kind of being right about that but Mm -hmm. um i was like chumbo you got to have something for me like you have to have something for me it's like dude yeah i have we we got old mice in here and and James, like, he's really trustworthy, and he hates old Pativ. And I was like, oh, man, like, of all the people that you guys could have pulled, <laughs> Had it, to be it James. was this guy. It was this guy, yeah, that I'd heard nothing good about, mm-hmm. right? So anyway, and so when I went with the rock draw thing, I really didn't have a lot of faith in that plan, but I had really no other option. And so um, when we tied – and we were waiting on the revotes. It was like a whole night that we couldn't talk to each other. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually felt pretty safe about that vote once it was a tie. Because mm-hmm. I was thinking, like, there's no way anybody on my side is going to flip. So it's either going to be someone from their side gets scared and votes Selin out. Or Selin and I are just both immune. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking that night, like, do I really want to be in this alliance? Like, I love Chumbo. And I don't know, maybe it's my fault now that I hadn't really connected as much with any other ones. But basically, so what started as an emotional thing, thinking about it, it more became a numbers thing in my mind because I'm thinking Rachel and Jonathan have been tight since like day one. Mm -hmm. Chumbo, Chumbo is tight with them now. I mean, I was tight with Hannah after we swapped, so I, I could get that. And James, people don't like him. And I don't really trust him. But the big thing is, you know, he's really goading himself at this point. Um, and I think that's, I think to his credit, he's a better player than that to say, but uh, people just didn't like him. So I'm thinking no way Rachel and Jonathan are going to take me over Chumbo and they're all going to fight over James because he's not going to get votes at the end, but this people with this group left. So I was thinking, and I appreciated them going to rocks, but like, at the same time, I was like, they're also just preserving their numbers. They don't know that I'm thinking about this yet. And nobody's going to just jump to the other side, like, blindly to a 
a team that didn't ask for them burning all their bridges doing so. So I was like, I'm going to get fifth with this group. Mm-hmm. And so after the rock draw, it actually worked out too with Zach going home because I don't know if the move would even been possible. But um, so, I mean, you guys know, I, I, I talked to Chumbo about going with me with Celine and Liv. Obviously didn't know about their connection with Andy. But in that moment, I was like, this is a good thing. Like, we could really go far with this. And then Chumbo said, like, yeah, but I really don't want to leave out Rachel. You know, like, he, he basically told me in so many words he'd rather be loyal to Jonathan and Rachel than to me. And I get that. Like, I was ready to make this this flip. But, like, I was like, okay, well, I mean, that in that kind of confirms to me that I would have been the, the fifth person on that five-person alliance. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was like, I, I need to just get – get the ducks in a row for this move and um, get the old Pativs on board for this. And um, at that point, I, I think I'd already done so much talking anyway, I couldn't have backed out of it, <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah, it was, conf- it was confirmed to me then that I, I should make that move. Mm-hmm. So you knew there were, there was no future with the, your, your old tribe and James, like they were, and, and that it really makes a lot of sense now that you say that, that like they probably would have all fought over taking James to the end. And J- there was Jonathan there as well. It would have been very hard for you to get past fifth with that group of people. So you wanted to take a chance and go to people who you, you might actually have a chance with. Right. Like I knew flipping, there's so many risks in it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I tried to establish something before the flip. Mm-hmm. with Celine and Liv. Um, and I did a little bit of talking to Andy and Andrew also. I would have probably have done more talking then too. Mm-hmm. But um if I could go back. But uh uh but yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly that's exactly um the mentality I had about it. Um I and you know I, it probably would have worked out the same like just me having to win immunity, mm-hmm. which I mean I mean, I may have won if nobody was as fast as her at it, but I mean, it would have been, I think it would have been the same situation, but a little bit less exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I definitely think your flip definitely changed the dynamic of the game and definitely like completely shifted the course of what we thought was going to be kind of like a pagonging into just this very interesting dynamic game that we had. So definitely that's why I kind of say it's like, the mo- the season defining move right there because that changed it from probably like a boring sort of pick up pick off the other side season into something actually a little more interesting than that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so thank you for clarifying that. That definitely gives us a little bit more perspective on that that move and that whole round in general. I did want to talk about a little bit about the the pre merge round where or just the pre-merge in general, you had some highs in finding the idol and some lows in misplaying it and Hannah went home. What did you think in the moment that you found that idol? What were your kind of thoughts and emotions? Um, well, if you follow my confessionals, like that entire day, I had just been just, just lobbing Hail Marys at this stupid, at the stupid <laughs> cicads or clue. Mm-hmm. And, and so and it, it was kind of cool because I was literally thinking while I was doing it, this is like one of those episodes that like they feature one of these players for like a good three, four minutes just mm-hmm. looking and the music's building. You're like, they're going to find it. They're going to find it. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I'm right there. Like, so I used a different search engine too. And that's how I found the, the clue. But when I got it, that was, I was like really, really pumped. I was really excited about it. And it mostly came from like, you know, the, we had this whole, you know, the whole like crazy pipe dream plan of throwing, which is never a good idea. Mm-hmm. And then we had we had to like trim Josh out too. So like at this point, I didn't think that we were going to flip anybody. Mm-hmm. In hindsight, I wish we'd actually had worked on Zach because now I know that he was pretty much the outside one out of them three, if there was one. Mm-hmm. But uh, that idol was like, now now we have a chance now like Hannah and i have a chance to get into the merge and i don't think we had played the immunity challenge so we were also trying to bank on that but if we lost which we did 
that was our chance to get into the merge together. Uh-huh. And so, and I thought, I honestly thought it would be easier to know which one of them they'd be voting for. I mean, I had done really good at challenges and I would have assumed it was me. Mm-hmm, um, yeah. So like when, when it got to the vote after, after I had the idol and everything, Ann and I were just like really trying to work live over. Um, and then so Lynn was trying to work Hannah over. I don't really know why, because it would have just been a layup vote for them three, two. Uh-huh. And they said that they were not even thinking about the idol. So I don't know what they were really trying to do, but Hannah kind of caught them in this very small, subtle, like inconsistency on how they described Jack getting voted out. Mm-hmm. And she started catching them on that. And they were like, okay, Hannah's got to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we were just like, we got to, it, it's a coin flip at this point yeah. because they all locked their votes in. So, you know, we're like, dang well i hope we picked the right freaking person and we didn't but and they flushed the idol without even trying <laughs> yeah but uh it sucked that i got the idol and then eight hours later played it mm-hmm. but uh i think either way either way i think that was the play to make even though it didn't end up working mm-hmm. i think that's what we had to do oh definitely i i think and I'll, i think a lot of the spectators agreed that like you're just honestly have to take that chance because you know you're down three two and you know there's at least a 50% chance you both make it and you idle out someone right there. So I think it was definitely the correct play uh, on your part. Uh, on that tribe, I do want to I do want to ask what the whole deal was with throwing and Josh, because I know you talked about it a little bit, but from an outsider's perspective, it seemed like you guys told Josh you were throwing and then he didn't really get the memo that you weren't throwing anymore. And then you <laughs> voted him out for thinking you were throwing so so what was what was the whole deal with that did you tell him the throws off don't don't submit that or what what happened there <laughs> it sounds so dirty and, and actually i i can't remember if i got like a negative thing for this one on the that chart that mm-hmm. yeah the guy made today i don't remember but anyway yeah you guys knew our whole plan we had to we were gonna throw um but like believe try to do it believably but like we're gonna throw See if we can flip somebody. Mm-hmm. Josh was not helping at all. Like he seemed very content to just let Hannah and I do all of this this social work with them, and he was very MIA, like so hard to get a hold of. Mm-hmm. And so, and then he started getting really frantic because he just felt unsafe because he had spent all this time not talking to anybody, and so. Hannah and I were kind of getting worried that he would get frantic enough to just either blow up this one shot plan that we had or just flip outright and one of us would go home. So we're like, we've been working together so tight since the swap and a, and a good bit before that. So like it was about self-preservation mm-hmm. for Hannah and I. And so once we knew that Josh, it, this plan is not going to work because Josh is, this is just not going to work even just with this element. We're like, there's like an hour left in this challenge. Let's just put in good scores, not, not tell him we're not throwing anymore. So it just, we can easily be like, Hey, his score sucks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It sounds so dirty, but mm-hmm. uh, it, it was mostly about just keeping Hannah and I in the game together. Yeah. And, and that makes a lot of sense. You, you cut Josh off just so you could hopefully have a chance at, uh, at making it together and so it would come wouldn't come back to bite you guys that makes a lot of sense here and the definitely when it was happening the spectators were like oh my god they're just doing him so dirty like that <laughs> like but it, it makes a lot of sense when you talk about how, how he wasn't talking to anybody and how he was kind you of know, inactive it would have been a lot easier if he was as active in the game as he is in spectator lounge. oh <laughs> he, he was definitely way more active in spectator lounge i think i think he regrets that he wasn't as active in the game but he, he, it definitely would have been easier i'm sure if he was if he was playing that hard yeah yeah mm-hmm. and i mean like he also said he hated the challenge too and like this is not any disrespect to him i've just been there before like 14 years old your attention span is not there for mm-hmm. stuff like that if you don't like it yep so i don't know i i I don't really think it's completely his fault. I, it was just kind of what we had to do then, I felt like. Mm-hmm. You had to do what you had to do to keep yourselves alive. Definitely makes sense. Uh, okay, now that we got some clarification on that, I do want to kind of spring ahead here and talk about 
Uh, the final two, Andy won in a 4-3 vote against Selin, and you voted for Selin, if I do recall. What What's your feelings on the outcome? Why did you vote for Selin, and how do you just feel in general about this final two and how it capped off the season? Okay, so going into Final Tribal Council, I, I don't know if it's just all the talk that, that was in Ponderosa. Not necessarily, not the negative stuff about Selin, but like, I mean, I don't really know what it is, but, like, Liv just gassing up Andy's game. Mm -hmm. Like, she was in love with his game. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and I mean, it was really good. Like, you know, he he just flew completely under the radar, but was on top of each vote. And so I went into Final Tribal, like, it's going to take a lot for me to not vote for Andy. Mm -hmm. And it had nothing to do with Celine voting me out when I trusted her. I don't take that personally. Yeah. Um. So... Final Tribal starts, and the main thing that I've been about, especially with Selin, like I said in the Rock Draw, is just like own your game. Like whatever you do, if it, even if it's dirty, just say like, that's what I did. Like be consistent with how you played. Mm -hmm. And so, Selin's opening statement, it was I thought it was is very lengthy, mm -hmm. but I thought she explained very well each step that she took and like was like, you know, I had a lot of different people trusting me and all of them still trusted me each time we voted them out. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even Liv, even Liv like felt like there was some hope for her even at the end. Yeah. And, and so Andy's opening statement, just on the topic of like owning your game, I didn't, I felt like the way he described it. And I don't know if this is necessarily his fault. I'll, I'll get into it more in a second, but like, it felt like he, the way he described it, just like he tripped and fell into a lot of these moves, and they mm -hmm. were good moves. But like he was like, this person got voted out, so I went with this person, and then this person got voted out, so I went with this person, and then Lewis flipped, so I I was able to have some breathing room again, and so mm -hmm. he, and then he said his final two was officially started at final seven, which I was like, that is way later than like I thought it was, uh -huh. way later. And so I just thought he could have sold it better. But so I was like, okay, whatever. Like, I thought Slim's opening was better. But then I thought, you know, Slim was getting drilled, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, definitely. And so I was like, I didn't, I was reading everything and I had a thing that I was going to, I had already typed it and I was just going to copy and paste it. And it kind of already got covered in their openings. So I was kind of just observing for a while. And I, I thought it was such a waste of time, a lot of people's questions. But like, mm -hmm. um, even then, though, it it showed a lot about the two of them, I thought, because I was going to take Selin, right, to the end if I had made it. Mm -hmm. And a big part in that was, like, she was crumbling during the rock draw. Like, and I don't know if it was an act or not. I don't, I think a lot of the emotional things that she does is never fully an act. Mm -hmm. Just, I think, just the type of person she is. So I was like, man, if she crumbled during that pressure... I think she's going to be a mess during final tribal. Mm -hmm, yeah. And so, but she didn't like, she answered every question with conviction. Even the questions that were like really just like cutting and disrespectful to her game. She just kept going. And I mean, she'd comment on it a little bit, but it didn't, she didn't let her flust, let it fluster her. And then a kind of pivotal thing, I think in final tribal, I don't think anybody really talked about it, but me when Andy was like, Hey, can we just like take a break? Like, just put yourself in Celine's shoes. Like, this is not fair to her. Like, we need to just chill and take a break. I'm like, dude, he cracked for her before she did, and he wasn't even getting drilled. Mm -hmm. And so I that really impressed me. And then when he took his break, I, I know a lot of different people feel different about his D and D break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. But so he goes to do that, and I mean, I didn't really have a problem with it. But I thought Selin took like very good advantage of having the center of attention mm -hmm. and was answering questions really well. In fact, highlighting parts of her game that Andy was not involved in mm -hmm. that I thought was like really smart, like very good moves. And then it just came down to they both said it would have been to Selin's advantage, but not to Andy's, but they both said it that they played the same game. And it was very much so a partnership. And they decided together who to vote out, made the same move. So I'm like, 
okay, you guys are claiming that you played the exact same game except one of you has said, I barely lied in this game, and the other one has made final twos with four out of seven people on this jury mm-hmm. and obviously broken them. So it came down to a social thing, and I, I almost was going to type this, and I thought it kind of sounded cheesy, so I didn't, I didn't put it on there, but like Jeff Probst talking about the conception of Survivor is like, you can make it to the end however you want to, but the people you vote out had to vote for you. Mm-hmm. And so I thought Celine played an objectively cleaner game while doing the same moves, right? Because they said it. Mm-hmm. So like, I thought she nailed that part of the game better if they're claiming that they play the same game. So I was like, I, I really don't need to hear anymore. Like people can talk about every little single move that happened in the game. But as far as I'm concerned, that, that won my vote over. And honestly, the way she was answering too, and the reactions from like Liv and Rachel near the end of it, I was like, oh, Slim's got this. Mm-hmm. And so I was, I was actually shocked. I was actually shocked that they still voted for Andy because I thought that she gave them way more, but um, mm-hmm. they're entitled to their, their vote. But I, I still, I was very shocked and I think Andy deserves it, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely a, a great final too. Definitely two people who both played very well, and I think you give a really good uh, a really good case for Celine's game how they played this the same game and or similar games, and Celine didn't have to lie nearly as much and break promises nearly as much as as Andy. That makes a lot of sense from your especially you in the game. You were talking about how you wanted to, I believe you were talking about how you wanted to take you know stronger players further, and you wanted to do that sort of thing, which is why you were kind of with Celine and you wanted to take her to the end. Uh, and, and so I think that definitely lines up with kind of your aspirations in the game and your kind of feeling about the game. So I, it makes a lot of sense coming from your point of view. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, to be honest, is one of the criticisms that I've read about my game already that I really kind of do agree with, that I got like weirdly like had this weird like honorable streak in me Mm -hmm. and uh but i think that's just part of my core values and i think if i were to play again i probably would table them a little bit more Mm -hmm. but but still like just just yeah the way that i had perceived the game just in general but also this this specific um season yeah i thought that she hit all those points that i i wanted to hit Mm -hmm. and i feel like i did hit but i think she just Played it better. Played it better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense to me. It definitely, definitely lets us in a little bit more onto your kind of thoughts uh, on on the game and on the final two. So thank you so much for that. Uh, I did want to ask, going into next season. Next season is All Stars, as I think people are aware. Do you have any guesses or any any ideas of who you think deserves to be all an all star from your season? Do you deserve to be on All Stars? What's the what's kind of the the feeling? Have you thought about that at all? Um, man, I don't know. I I was hoping that you were gonna tell me, but uh, um, not yet. Uh, man, like I said before, I really really tried to. I mean, it was fun like making dad jokes and confessionals and like pandering to spectators, but mm-hmm. uh. Overall, I really, really was trying to not think about the perception of my game until afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I've had a few people that I talked to um, after the game is over. Like I, I reached out to, um, to 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 John, who won last season, mm-hmm. and talked very briefly. But he said like he'd be pretty surprised if I wasn't called back for All Stars. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a, a pretty. I I thought that was a like, I was very surprised to hear that. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, to be honest, I don't know, man. Like, I I felt like I was very much so myself. And if I was entertaining in confessionals, then I'm happy about that. Um, and I I thought I played a a weird game. <laughs> now that mm-hmm. I'm out of it, I thought it was consistent while I was playing it. But I do think it was definitely a little weird. But um, uh, after reading the reviews, I might need some time to to really have a fair assessment of whether I would deserve that or not. But uh, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know. I think I put myself in there, but other than myself, definitely Chumbo. Mm-hmm. I mean, like the dude. I I love how much of not even like an ironic meme, 
he became just like the the like the following of different aspects of his life just such a such a popular <laughs> aspect his relationship with his wife <laughs> his his dog mm-hmm. um his his freaking one liners mm-hmm. um he was just so likable all around and played a good game so definitely chumbo mm-hmm. Selin, i think you'd have to put in there um andy i think it's plagan regardless um, but I mean, I think he deserves it too. Mm-hmm. And then I, I said this in professionals and I know she took, she's taken heat already, but mm-hmm. like, I think if Liv was in like a heroes versus villain season, I mean, just imagine her plan, same plan, just with different people. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't care about their emotions as much. And the people she's pitching this to really don't care either and want to make a big move with her. Mm-hmm. It would have worked. And she would have been this like, just this mastermind that nobody knew how to crack and everybody thought had to figure out, but she, but she couldn't be figured out. I don't know. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like she would be amazing as like a, in a season like that, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. And then I think both Hannah and from what I um, see from like spectators, Zach would both be like great on second chance. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So there's a lot, I think <laughs> that could be brought back. Um, and I'm probably probably pretty biased, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd have to say that. Oh, and people want Man Wonder back, so <laughs> money. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I I can't comment obviously because I'm going to be a host about the the selections. But dead me and the main host, uh, Boar are definitely going to be uh, taking a look at everything and deciding that I think the season probably won't be for a while. Uh, maybe not till spring or summer, depending on when the the main. Cause uh, Bor obviously he showed up very brief. He casted you all, showed up very briefly, but then got very busy, so had to kind of s- step in and take over. So he, I'm sure he'll want to be present for it when it happens. So the season I'm sure will be a little later down the line. So there is that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Th- well, if if I would get selected for it, that's a way better for me anyway uh-huh. because. I've said before, I think my wife would leave me if I jump right into another season. <laughs> oh, oh man! I, I many people, many people have said that. So you're not. I'm sure your <laughs> your wife isn't alone in feeling that. Uh, it's definitely a big time sink, but very, very rewarding. I think. Definitely. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. definitely way more time than I had even anticipated. I mm-hmm. think I remember messaging um, him before the game started. Like, what time do you guys play? Like. I'm thinking like it's all like a live thing for like a few hours every few nights. And um, I mean, I, I caught on to the format like right away, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, way more of a time commitment than I thought. Oh yeah. Damn. And I think it, I'm getting off topic probably, but I, it, it, it seems like it, there's a little bit of variation that can happen mm-hmm. than the real game. This might be the only real major difference besides the, obvious physical aspect of it but it's like you have 24 hours to vote rather than like an evening to Mm -hmm. figure it out you know yeah so and you can change your vote if everybody hasn't locked in so Mm -hmm. like um so yeah so there's some some sequences that just went all day you know Mm -hmm. you're you're talking to people literally all day long and sometimes you get nowhere Mm -hmm. sometimes i'm like at work checking my phone Mm-hmm. like hiding <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely. yeah yeah it's definitely it's definitely a lot uh so i i, I advise there's people who play like multiple of these at once and uh, I, there's absolutely no way i could ever do that no no i i feel the same way i think those people are crazy and they should they're not human uh but it's 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 just insane the amount of uh time like especially if you're playing multiple some of these can take well uh, Lewis, is there anything else you would like to add or like to say to the people watching this? Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of, I feel like I kind of covered it at the end of my confessionals, but like, it was just like a crazy ride. And I know I was probably a decently frustrating player to watch. <laughs> um, the decisions I made, I felt like I was very up and down, um, specifically to Steve Moose, my biggest <laughs> critic and advocate. Uh, I did take to heart your high horse criticism and I really don't feel like I needed to even go that way. And I, I don't know if I could completely table that, but 
I definitely, I definitely want to be a little bit like less worried about that if I were to play again. Mm-hmm. I said like not, and I'm not saying that I played even anything like JT, mm-hmm. but I feel like if I were to play again, uh, I would. I feel like it would be more of an arc of like JT from 18 to 20, where he was just like, I played this certain game already, so like. I don't. I wouldn't be worried about playing this different way again, and I don't want to like. I, I really don't want to. If I do play again, be like, I'm gonna blindside everybody. So you better vote me out first mm-hmm, next yeah. time I play. You know, I, I'm not saying mm-hmm. that either, but uh, I just think I would probably make some. I don't know. I, I'd play. I think a little smarter, mm-hmm. <laughs> a little more analytical as I went instead of the 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 big dreams guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. And now, now you have this experience. You've kind of gone through, and you can you can kind of see what you did and correctly, and what you did maybe incorrectly, subjectively, I guess. Uh, and then you can kind of see and adjust it to whenever you might play again. So I think I think it's definitely uh, the first the first time everybody plays. It's there's so much fine tuning you have to do, and so much you're you're just completely new to the whole format. So I think everybody can has things they can improve on and everybody has things that they can do better and i do want to say that i think you you weren't one of the more in my eyes you weren't one of the more frustrating players to watch i really enjoyed your your confessionals that were very uh went very in depth and kind of ex- explained to us what was happening and all was on your mind you were you were definitely uh some of the strategic decisions i i don't well, no, I think some of the strategic decisions were most of them were pretty solid. Like I think the flip was also very solid. Uh, probably your best play at the time. I I I just want to say that you, were, in my eyes, weren't one of the more frustrating players to watch, and we definitely appreciated having you on the season and having your presence on the season. Yeah, thanks. And I put at the end of my confessional too. Like, I I hope you guys have enjoyed having me mm-hmm. for our media because I. It's been it's been super awesome. Like it was so much fun. Even though I've I literally dreamt of like sunny day sky, and <laughs> I I dreamt that I was getting voted out. And I, I actually one time I dreamt that I was getting voted out. And then when I woke up, it had already happened. And my whole Discord setup had changed. And Manwinder was just going on and on about everything I did wrong. Oh man, Manwinder coming back <laughs> to haunt you even in your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Looks absolutely nothing like I imagined him. I was imagining him as his profile picture the whole time. I was also imagining him as his profile picture, so he's definitely <laughs> definitely surprised there. Oh man, but I, I <laughs> he's he's such a he's such a, a great presence in in the spec lounge. I'm, I'm very he he's as much of a presence as I expected him it, from in the season. Oh, this is one thing I want to say mm-hmm. before we before we wrap this up. Yeah. Um, one of my least favorite players is freaking Candace. All right. So. Oh man. Please find a different parallel for me, please. Um, <laughs> I know I flipped. I know I flipped, but I'll take uh, almost anybody else. <laughs> that that's so funny because just in, in in the in the it was either I think it was the Manwinder interview where where he compared you to Candace uh, that I, I just did, and I, and I was like, oh man. So so we'll we'll find another comparison for you other than Candace. I I can't say I know. I don't know. I don't remember that season too well, but I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure there's another comparison for you out there. We'll, we'll find one for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, uh, Lewis. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you so much for making helping make the season great, helping make Armenia a great season. We, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for dealing with my long-windedness in this and my confessional and everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Of course, of course, anytime. We love long-windedness in confessionals. The more the better. Great, great. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, again, thanks so much for this. And you'll probably be seeing this come up sometime in this next week. We'll see. Awesome. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thank you so much. Uh, All right. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I'll see you around. All right. Thank you. See mm-hmm. you. See ya. All right. What's up, everybody? We're back with another Armenia exit interview. This time we have the fourth placer of Armenia, Andrew. How are you doing today, my man? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Time to give everyone uh, the goat version of Survivor Armenia. The goat version. Perfect, <laughs> perfect. We want to hear every version, whatever you may call it. Uh, 
So, yeah, I, I did want to ask first thing, and I, I, I think I asked most people this. How does it feel like, obviously, it's been a bit since the game has been going on. How does it feel being out of the game? Or how did it feel like as soon as you got out of the game, you were like, okay, we're done with this. No more constantly checking Discord. Is it like a relief or you kind of miss it? What's the, the feeling there? It was great for a few days because, yeah, my wife was like not happy at all. With this <laughs> I'm game, sure. But, uh... So a few days, it was nice, and then I was starting to, like, it would have been great if there was, like, a every other day version of the game where I could, you know, take a day off, come back and play. Yeah, of course. Um, but, I mean, I definitely miss parts of it, so it, uh, it was, like, bittersweet, I guess. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I and I will say, me and Boar, the main host, have been discussing something like a, a different format that's similar to that. So we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, mm. but yeah, I, I definitely know what you mean. It's like a big, it's a big time sink, but you also kind of end up missing it. That makes, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to kind of go through some, of, some of the game and s try to talk through it from your perspective and see kind of what your take on things is. Uh, sure. Yeah. So I want to start at the beginning, very first okay. tribal you guys are in. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about what all went down with the, the Jack and James vote. Because according to, to James and Jack, they were originally gunning for you. And then, of course, that didn't happen. And it ended up being flipped back on them. So can you kind of tell, walk us through that round and tell us, like, what happened through your eyes in that first tribal? Because it was a bit of a mess. Uh, yeah. So I guess we hopped in a five-person alliance maybe a couple days before that. Mm -hmm. Um so I felt pretty good going into that. And I kind of figured, because I didn't really talk to any of those guys, um, I was pretty lazy about, um, you know, being social with people I wasn't working with. So mm -hmm. I'm not too surprised my name came up. Um, and then I had this plan to try and, like, slowly involve one person at a time so we could pull one or two of them over and then not be screwed going into the swap with, like, two angry people. Yeah. But that kind of fell apart. Um, and then I guess... From my side of it, everyone, or at least a few people, wanted James first, and then Jack kind of ran his mouth a bit too much or something. I don't know. He made the girls nervous and mm -hmm. uh, just kind of ended up putting the target on himself. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really care at that time uh, who was going, as long as it wasn't us five. So um, I was kind of like just sitting back and watching the fireworks, because they weren't really talking to me much either, right? Because obviously I was one of the names they yeah, put up. So. It was uh, it was definitely less hectic for me than it was for other people. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So so there, you didn't see all of, all of the chaos going on behind the scenes as much. No. Okay, probably for That's the better. Kind of like honestly. a trend throughout the season, anyway. So it, <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, and so then, uh, you were very close with with Andy throughout the whole game. When did that start? Like, when did you start thinking, okay, I want to be a duo with with Andy, and I want to go all the way with him when when did that thinking begin uh they would have been after the swap like i liked him pretty much the whole game mm -hmm. um right away he was the first one talking to everybody at least that was my sense yeah he was the first one to dm me i was just kind of laying back seeing what happened um seeing who was kind of playing harder and uh so i got the impression he was like the chumbo of our tribe like talking to everybody uh -huh. um so i was like okay this guy is for sure someone to keep around if for no other reason than uh, he's fun and he's going to collect information so that was like my early assessment of him but then after the swap uh it was like there was no chance of me not working with him and it, it just kind of went on from there yeah of course and then talking a little bit about the swap uh so so obviously you you split up from uh james and tobias was there ever any chance you guys were going to work together you and andy james tobias was there ever any chance of that or was it just like dead on arrival as soon as you guys got uh, together my whole thing was let's feel out the other three um mm -hmm. and see how that goes and they were just awesome so it was it they didn't have too much chance i would say at least in my eyes uh early on like but before the swap i wasn't right away like let's get rid of them but the other three were really cool and mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we just we just voted separately from them. So it seemed like even if we kept them, it was always going to be more nervous than than not keeping them kind of thing. Yeah, of course. And and then uh, obviously Chumbo, Rachel, Jonathan, I think it was they went mm -hmm. with you guys instead of and or they went with you and Andy instead of uh, the other two. 
Do you think that was mm-hmm. a bad move on their part, or do you think that it worked out for them in the end because they had maybe stronger social players with them? What do you think? Personally, I think it was a bad move. Like I put in my confessionals that um, Tobias and James are on the bottom, so it would be in their best interest to scoop them up. Like it doesn't make sense to scoop up two guys that have partners on both tribes, right? Yeah. But um, and we were like pretty straight with them too. We told them these two guys didn't vote with us. Um, maybe a little too honest. Maybe we shouldn't have said that, but I guess uh, we kind of won them over enough yeah, to get up. through that first vote. Mm-hmm. But then, at least from what I'm finding later on, it's a good thing we don't have two votes because there's a good chance uh, they might not have stuck with us for a second vote. So it was kind of like just long enough mm-hmm. for us all to team up there. Yeah, and I think I think you're right on the money with the fact that like maybe was not their best move there. I think even after the vote, they were like, wait a minute, these guys were on the bottom. Why did we just vote against them? <laughs> so I think <laughs> right? I think they had a little bit of that regret right afterwards. So uh, it's probably a good thing you guys didn't go to a second tribal, but I mean, it worked out for you guys in the end. Oh uh, yeah, too easily. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and so then going into the merge, you only went to two tribals pre-merge, not mm-hmm. bad. Uh, then going into the merge, you know, obviously that first merge vote was, was hectic. Can you just walk us through kind of what happened from your perspective and your thoughts on like drawing rocks and then of course Zach going home. Uh yeah, so before the merge I was actually still debating if I wanted to work with uh, the dog alliance there with, with Chumbo, Rachel and John cuz uh-huh. um they were really cool. So it wasn't like right away I was planning on burning them, but um mm-hmm. once we merged it was just like, you know, old vibes came back and everything felt good with with the pad of 5, so I wasn't really concerned um, after it was a tie about going to rocks. I was like, let's do this. I'm not going to jump on these guys now. But I did think that um, it was going to be a little easier. I was hoping that the other guys were going to vote for James and then we could get rid of Lewis and kind of try and mend things together after that. But um, yeah, it got way more crazy than I thought it would be. James pulls out an idol uh completely forgot rachel had immunity so we were in we were in trouble there it wasn't looking too good yeah but I mean, it was fun man i did enjoy it i was uh i was pretty pretty happy with with that vote just because just to add the excitement to it yeah definitely rocks <laughs> rocks are exciting for everybody that whole round in the in the spectator lounge ben was saying it's not gonna happen and then nobody's gonna do rocks and then of course rocks happen and everybody's <laughs> just chanting rocks 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 Getting yeah ready for it <laughs> It's it's definitely no, that was good. exciting. Yeah, yeah. And and it it seemed like nobody really had to think about on the revote too. Like everyone was just ready to go. I mean, on the other side, mm-hmm. obviously they had the numbers, so I get why they didn't want to jump. And it was kind of cool that we were all ready to stick together and uh and go to rocks for each other. Yeah, everyone was just like, fuck it, let's do it at this point. We're we're already in this deep. Uh, yeah. then of course Zach ended up going home. Was he someone you were ever close to, or was this like not a big hit for you? It wasn't, it was best case scenario for me in terms of our five, but uh, I would have loved to keep him and have one of the other guys go home for sure. Yeah, of course. One of, uh, what was it, Chumbo and... Yeah, Chumbo, Chumbo or John, Jonathan. I guess. Yeah, Whoever Jonathan, was, yeah, uh, right. I would have liked, man, if Chumbo went, that would have been great because he was, uh, like, one day into the swap, I was like, okay, this guy's going to be trouble. He's, uh, he's, he's talking to everybody. He's going to know what's going on. So mm-hmm. it would have been sweet if he left, but mm-hmm. we all saw what happened, right? He went all the way to three. Yeah, so does Chumbo just kind of give, give off this, like, threatening aura? Uh, just It was a similar aura to Andy. Like, he's very likable. Uh-huh. Um, I just I could just tell he was, you know, the type of guy that was going to talk to everybody, unlike me, who's just talking to, like, a few people that I'm working with. Yeah. So I, I, I knew if something happened, he would be capable of, you know, working on other relationships because he's already got his foot in the door with everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Uh, definitely, definitely a very, very social player. I think everybody, <laughs> I, I think it was quite easy to peg him as that. Right. As Jumbo, yeah. Uh, moving forward a little bit, you know, uh, with the Lewis flip, uh, did, what was, what was happening that round? Like, did you know Lewis was going to flip and that Liv and Celine were, because like, An- from Andy's point of view, he said like, I had no clue. They just they just flipped him, and I was like, okay. Uh, so were you aware of this happening and Lewis flipping, and then all of that, all the talking happening? No, I scenes or... feel like I found out around the same time Andy did, because uh-huh. um, we were both like talking like this. This sounds sketchy. Why why would he do this? It's uh, you know we're at nine. He's got the numbers. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make any sense. So we kind of were talking back and forth a little bit about it. 
Um, and yeah, I didn't really, I was maybe, I don't know, what did I say? I was like 60, 70%, you know, feeling good that after finally, when I ran through everything in my head, I was like, okay, I guess it kind of makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. cause why would he make up this elaborate plan only to not do it? Like that's, that doesn't seem yeah. to get him anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what kind of settled it on me. I'm like, it doesn't make sense to do all this when you already have the numbers. Um, so that came out of nowhere. And I was also talking to James. I was like, man, I think, uh, I think I'm done. Like I got no ideas left tonight unless something falls in my lap. And this literally fell in my lap, like not long after that. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was huge. I mean, it, it totally didn't help him. All it did was get us to the end, but, um, good on him yeah. for, you know, making a move. Right. Yeah. So you, so in terms of Lewis's move, which I mean, pretty much defined the season. Uh, mm -hmm. so you don't think it was a good move for him ultimately. I mean, I figure worst case scenario, he ends up in five, whether he does it or doesn't. So, mm -hmm. but maybe he gets further if he doesn't do the move. Uh -huh. um, if he doesn't do the move, we probably just get picked off one by one. Like, I don't know if any moves really happen or yeah. something probably would have happened closer to like five, six or seven. But, um, uh -huh. but yeah, I mean, it, I, good for him for trying, right? Like I, I didn't know their whole dynamics. I never worked with the guy. I barely spoke to him at that point. So. Uh -huh. I was completely in the dark on it, but uh, I was willing to once again ride it out with my team and hope for the best. Of course, makes sense. Yeah, I think I thank Lewis for that move because I think you're very right. I, I from what Chumbo said in his exit interview, I think they definitely would have tried to just pick you guys off, uh, ride it out with that five. So it made the game much more interesting with Lewis flipping, whether it was a good move for him or not. Ultimately, yeah. Uh, Moving on from that, though, uh, the the whole round where Rachel went and lives <laughs> kind of what because I know you were somehow like somewhat involved in that. Like you, you said you I think you from what I've heard, you said you would be interested in flipping on Celine and then you didn't want to. What what happened that round? Because I think I think a lot of people should have some questions about what all went down uh, the round Rachel went on. Yeah, so Liv came to me way too late, unfortunately. She had already hashed out this whole plan, um, uh -huh. basically with Myosin, and then came to me last. So I was like, okay, let me think about this. And then before I could even think about it, uh, Chumbo basically started blowing it up, telling Lewis everything uh -huh. came back around to Liv. So she was like, okay, this is retarded. I don't want to, um, you know, can't exactly do a quiet move now when everybody kind of knows about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted to think about it. Like right away, I told her it doesn't make sense. It's way too early um let's try and wait till you know maybe six or seven to to do something um but i was I, you know i was thinking about it i, I really didn't want to split the four of us up at that point mm -hmm. so i mean it kind of worked out like i wanted rachel gone and she ended up going but uh yeah, yeah that definitely just kind of messed up with the whole season from then on as well definitely definitely blew up blew up Liv's position and then the next round where people were gunning for Liv, mainly Selin. Uh Did you want mm -hmm. Liv gone at that point? Or were, or do you not no, want to No, hell no. I wanted game? to keep her. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I was like telling her, I was like, listen, you got to talk to Selin because I think she's your only chance to stay in the yeah. game. Because um, I also didn't want to jump with Chumbo, John, and Liv and vote Selin out the four of us at the time either because I just didn't trust the other guys. So that seemed to like hurt both our games as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely wanted to keep her around after that but um i was trying to just distance myself from the whole thing yeah. and this was before before the whole chat logs came out when it was like pretty obvious uh what had actually happened right so until then it was looking pretty good it looked like she was going to get away with it i was able to kind of stay in the background as if i had nothing to do with it and then after uh, the chat logs everything just kind of blew up mm -hmm. and you were very adamant about like the chat logs sealing Liv's fate do you think if there were no chat logs if people didn't copy and paste that she would have just gotten away with it and nothing would have came of it well until they did get shared she did get away with it so i have to believe that that was true right i mean everybody was calling those the the myosin out for being liars so it was uh -huh. like it was working perfectly and that's kind of the whole point of of your social bonds is that you build that trust you can't just have one of the players pull out a tape recorder and be like this is what actually happened Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what it felt like, right? Mm -hmm. um, but she had built those bonds to earn that trust where she could lie and still have trust over someone telling the truth who didn't build those bonds. So that's why it felt like it, it completely blew her game up. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I will say we're definitely looking at 
those rules and maybe limiting how much you can copy and paste or maybe just I don't know we're gonna look at it because I, I, I do agree with you that I think probably the entire chat logs a little a little much for sure so we're, we're, oh, we're looking crazy. at that in the future uh in the future because uh, you should just be able to say this is what they said you know like just like it would be in the real game like you know oh this you know so yeah, let's yeah, say yeah, chumbo yeah. talks to lewis this is what liv said but the whole copy and paste thing I'm like what's yeah, i get yeah, that yeah. it's you can fake it but if the whole point of not doing screenshots is to avoid cheating this kind of felt like cheating just of course way. and y yeah we're probably going to limit like maybe how much you can copy and paste because like i feel like copying pasting a, a little like a few messages is definitely different and more easily fake than like a whole chat log mm -hmm. i think that's so so maybe something like that maybe banning it all together we'll we're gonna definitely change it somehow for future seasons and uh, we'll get talking nice. about that uh because that's never even happened before so i guess there's a first even after 15 <laughs> seasons there's a first time for for everything wow yeah, and you can't, that's it, you don't really know what it's a problem until it comes up. Of course, yeah, Chumbo's a game changer, I guess. Yeah, say. no, for sure, <laughs> I mean, good changed. on him for, because uh, he didn't really have any other moves, I guess, at that point. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't something I would have done, but hey, that shows how hard he was playing that he did it. So. He was definitely playing hard, and even though he he uh, he copied those chat logs, you and the rest of the jury were very high on, on Chumbo. Was it just because he was, like, a great social player and made it so far? Like, what what was... The reason the jury was super high on Chumbo. The reason I liked him is because the first day we swapped, so he would, you know, out of the all the Mysons that I met, I pegged mm -hmm. him as the biggest threat right away. So for him to be the yeah. last one standing, I was like, you gotta give respect for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we always had that. But I think I still would have voted for Andy anyway, even if it was a two of them at the end. Uh huh. I would you have voted uh, for Andy just over anyone, basically? I think he played the best game by far. So mm -hmm. yeah. I probably would have voted him for him even if I was at the end with him. So that's that's uh, yeah, just for fun. Even though I didn't have a vote, I would have been like, "You guys got to vote for." Him. Yeah, yeah, just vote for Andy. Uh, yeah, okay. And so then, I want to talk about the the final four vote a little bit and what all happened there. So, can you give like <laughs> your your perspective on what happened in the final four vote? uh i i wanted to do a couple things at five and six and i kept getting shut down so at, fi at final four i was like okay well clearly i have no say in what's going on mm -hmm. um so let's just you know make something happen it did it, it wouldn't have really mattered if uh we voted chumbo out so at the time i also wasn't sure if chumbo kind of talked himself into final three i think it was more me talking myself out of final three but mm -hmm. uh, at that point, I was just like, whatever, let's see some fire. Let's let, let's see something happening. The game's almost over. I'm getting a little bored here. I already know I can't win, so so let's see what happens. Yeah, of course. Might as well and, just make and some sure fun. enough, uh, you know, Chumbo went and told them, I guess. And uh, I also told Andy, so like there, was, there wasn't much of a secret what I was doing. Uh-huh. And they were like, let's get him out. Yeah. Uh, then that's what happened i guess i think we were we were fully <laughs> expect we were i think everybody in the spec lounge was fully expecting like fire and then yeah yeah and then uh chumbo just voted you out so <laughs> but he told me later that he uh he had sent us to fire so you know whatever that's worth i guess uh yeah i kind of regretted that mm -hmm. yeah i think but I think my plan was initially for celine and chumbo to go to fire um which may have happened if i had kind of been a little more hush hush about it when, instead of telling andy but uh um, uh-huh yeah i was just curious what fire would have been too so because I, I haven't really followed any of the past seasons so i didn't know uh what it would have been mm -hmm. obviously not making fire right yeah no not making real fire i wish uh <laughs> but typically it's a puzzle like a jigsaw puzzle. We did oh, just okay. do a jigsaw puzzle that round, so we were thinking maybe something different, but uh, it didn't yeah. come to that, so we didn't have to have to think too hard. Uh, oh, right on. But traditionally, it's a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, that makes sense. So I don't know who wins that out of you and Solin. You think you have better jigsaw puzzle skills than her? Uh, I don't know. Jigsaw puzzle. I think I definitely crush her in a slide puzzle. But Yeah, um, oh yeah, jigsaw... slide puzzle. I don't know where uh, she was on on the jigsaw in round four. Yeah, no. no, no. Um, I think me and Chumbo, from the sounds of it, were similar when Andy finished. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he fucking crushed that. It, I feel like it took me so long just to move the pieces out of the way to see what I was working with, mm -hmm. and then 
Um, so yeah, that was. I also didn't practice doing a single jigsaw puzzle online, which I probably should have just to yeah. get an idea of what it was going to look like. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I felt pretty safe at that point that people just wanted to sit at the end with me. So yeah, I hear you. Uh, and so then you make it to jury. Obviously, I mean, I think you said already. There's pretty much n no nothing in that'll change you voting for Andy, right? What did you make? Of Not really, but. Yeah. I uh, I was close, honestly. I uh, Selin crushed it, so I mm -hmm. was like debating back and forth. I was like, fuck, because going into it, it sounded like it was going to be six one, right? And I was like, yeah. there's no way this girl should only get one vote after that. So I was like, I, if nothing else, she she deserves more than one vote. Uh, but then I thought she did so well that she might have actually already swung a few people. Mm -hmm. But then I got worried if I voted for her that she might win, and sure enough, that's <laughs> uh, what happened. So probably glad you didn't didn't end up. Throwing that vote for her, huh? Yeah, but I was like, fuck, Andy, you're not even fighting for this. Uh -huh. um, yeah, what did you but, make of uh, No, I get it. <laughs> I mean, he was, I, I guess he just, he was really close. She was his real number two, right? So he didn't really want to put her down to put himself up. So yeah, um, he kind of came out soft in the end there. But um, I mean, I had seen his whole game, so I, I knew how good it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how, how does the, the guy that I thought was the biggest threat manage to get to the end? final four where everybody wants to take him to the end like it, that, that's insane yeah of course it, it's especially and, insane with, with making it to the final four all three of those people you have final two deals with yeah and um and he and then he didn't even need it right and then he goes and wins the last two immunities just to, to put the icing on the cake so mm -hmm. it was uh it was like clear-cut player of the game for me definitely definitely so then you're you're happy with the the four three Andy beating Liv, you think it's it, it's pretty good representation of of things. Yeah, no, that that was actually perfect. Mm -hmm. um, close, you know, because yeah, right after that final tribal, it didn't deserve to be a blowout. So it was nice to see, uh, and good for her fan favorite, right? That's uh, that, that that's pretty good too. Mm -hmm, so the, the top two people end up taking something home. Yeah, exactly. I did want to ask because there were some varying opinions on this. What do you think of Andy playing D and D during the the final tribal? Because I know <laughs> some some people were like, "How could he do this? He can't make time." And some people were like, eh, "I mean, it goes twenty four hours anyway." So what what were you thinking? Yeah, I mean that's Andy, right? He was playing uh, he was playing that earlier in the game. So yeah, I guess it's, it's not a surprise. Mm -hmm. But uh, I it probably wasn't the smartest move. Yeah, um, but I guess it didn't really matter in the end. Yeah, I mean, in the end, it works out for him. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. But yeah, that was interesting. I mean, who takes off a final tribal, right? <laughs> Definitely. Can you imagine the, the the final tribal contestants just you know sitting around just playing some Dungeons <laughs> and Dragons while the contestants are or the jury's asking them questions? But I mean, it's so different. I guess it kind of worked out only because um, most of the questions were were geared towards Selene anyway. So yeah, that's, she was there. And... That's very true. I I feel like there were very few questions for Andy in comparison to Celine who got pretty much grilled all night. Yeah, poor girl. Yeah. But hey, she 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 hung in there tough and, and pulled it out. So Oh definitely. If anything, I think it actually helped her game because if she didn't get those questions, if she didn't get to hammer back at people and, and show how strong she was, maybe she doesn't uh flip anybody, right? And it, it ends up being six one. Oh yeah, hundred percent agree with you that uh even though those questions were were it was rough getting just like so many questions at you at all criticizing your game when you, you're able to respond to that in a, a clear and concise manner, I think that really helped her. And it showed that she was able to keep her cool and clearly lay out her game. Definitely, definitely mm -hmm. helped her and almost turned the tide. Uh, you're completely yeah. right on that one. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, with your game in total, if there was, if there was something you could go back and change about your game, like you had a time machine, you'd go back, do something differently. What, what do you think you would do differently? Uh, I think the only thing I could do differently is, is, uh, vote Selena with Liv at, uh -huh. at eight, basically. I mean, cause at that point there wasn't, um, I kind of wanted to do something at six, but I was like, for me to work with Chumbo and, and John, who I don't want to go to the end with, doesn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, and that, and that made me realize why Lewis made his move at nine. Cause I was like, it was kind of too late for me to do anything once Liv went. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I guess that, but. All in all, um, I mean, with with the with the time I had to put into this, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I wanted to go far just to kind of get the experience, see what was going on, mm -hmm. um, and I and I did have fun. So Definitely. I mean, I, I'm okay where it, where it all went. Yeah, gotcha. And then, 
coming out of the game, is there anything you think you can take away from it that you could maybe apply if you ever played in the future or you could apply to even real life? Is there anything you, th- you think you, you learned or you could take away? Uh, in terms of playing again, I could take a hundred things away from this. Um, uh-huh. I, I mean, I, I had a pretty bad game this time around, so I would have to obviously talk to way more people. Um, just, just put in a lot more time. Like I thought I was, it was already taking up too much time, but then I feel like people were putting in like twice as much time as me. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're staying up till five in the morning chatting and this and that. So, um, I mean, yeah, you got to put in the time build relationships with people you're not working with because otherwise uh, it's just too transparent that you're not working with them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and just basically copy Andy, right? Like even when you're safe, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have two or three backup plans. Yeah, of course. And uh, yeah, but other than that, I mean, I think I did pretty good in terms of laying low, which was my whole point. Mm-hmm. Although I just ended up laying so low, you couldn't see me. So that, <laughs> that was a little uh, <laughs> too much. Um, but, you know, it was fun. I mean, and in terms of uh, real life, I don't know, just uh, try shit that you're not sure about maybe because I didn't, I, I was pretty, I first said no when I was asked and then I was like, all right, let me think about it. And, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm, I'm glad I played. So yeah, I guess, uh, you know, just take a chance, try some stuff you're not sure about. Yeah, of course. That, that's a good lesson, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. I had something else I was going to ask. Uh, sh- uh, well, I remember what my question was. Sorry. Uh, d- d- is there <laughs> anything else you feel like you want to say to people or anything else you, you think you could, uh, take, not take away anything else you want to say or feel like hasn't been said yet that you want, want to say basically. Mm, I don't know. I hope I don't piss anyone off too much. Uh, I'm sorry for being boring for the spectators. I wasn't really thinking that people were really watching it the whole time. So I would definitely uh, have some more fun in confessionals and stuff and, and be a little more entertaining if I ever played again, mm-hmm. which is not going to be anytime soon just because uh, I don't want to get a divorce. <laughs> so, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I would definitely have some, some more fun with this and, uh, mm-hmm. and and just, you know, try and make it more entertaining next time. Yeah. And no, I will say that's definitely not just like a you thing. I think a lot of people, especially people who've never played an org before or ever done this kind of thing, don't even realize there's people watching or reading their stuff. So they're like, okay, why am I going to put stuff in my confessionals? If, is anybody even reading this? Uh, mm-hmm. So it, it's definitely something like a lot of people won't do so many confessionals or won't do uh, a whole lot to to show the specs what's happening because they just don't realize there's people spectating the game. So I think I, I think you're definitely not alone in that boat. And I, I remember what I was going to say. You were talking about how active people were. And I, I will say this cast specifically was like one of the most active casts I've ever seen. So I don't think that's too much your fault for not having all that time to put in. It was just these people were very active all day. And it was it was one of the, the most the most wild casts I've seen in terms of like activity and just being on all the time. And it's probably because they're also young. Like, I felt like it was millennials versus Gen X, and it was basically I was the only Gen X <laughs> with 15 millennials. Because I'm, like, I'm 39. I don't know if anyone else is even over 30, right? I don't know what the ages were. but Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I know there were people who had kids, but I don't know how old. Like, Chumbo and Lewis were our dads, but I don't know. Yeah, Chumbo's they're... 30. Lewis is, like, 25 or something. So oh, yeah, um, yeah, he, just, he just had a really early start. But I was like, man, everyone... Uh, so if I did play again, too, I'd like to have a few people, you know, closer to my age because I, like, I didn't get almost any of the references being... Sh- that I didn't watch any of the shows these guys watch. Oh, I the yeah. music they listen to. I got to look up every other abbreviation to see what the hell that means. <laughs> so yeah. I, I think I did okay considering, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that for for yes. uh, for history's sake, uh, the winner of All Stars was actually at, in her fifties, I think. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, nice. so uh, definitely, definitely more uh, more extreme. But anyone anyone can can do it. You just gotta take some time to learn what the kids say, <laughs> what the yeah. kids know. Uh, but but yeah, just a little a little history lesson there, Alice. That. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely different when, especially when you're playing with like Josh was like 13, 14, right? Yeah. So that's a huge, I don't even know like how, how you connect to someone that, that, that young or how, what you talk about, because I'm, it's like a whole different generation, right? That's true. I'd rather be too old than, than that young, if, if those are my options. Exactly, right? It, it makes a lot of sense. 
but yeah, anything else you wanted to say? Anything else you wanted to comment? Uh, say to anyone? Okay, so for next All Stars, my picks would be uh, basically. Oh, yeah. So I, the other thing I found weird about this season was uh, when we were at final five, I felt like other than myself, the other four people were like the four strongest players of the season. So like, when mm-hmm. the hell does that happen when you end up with a final five with all these strong players? So I kind of figured people would have got picked off yeah, more right. up until that point, but it didn't happen. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So for all stars, I would, I would say Chumbo, Celine, Andy, Lewis, mm-hmm. and uh, I would put Liv in there as well. Cause the, the fact that she was willing to make that move, um, I think that would have been the biggest move of the game by far. So mm-hmm. I, I give her a lot of respect for even considering that. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, and then and then if there were to be a second chance season, anybody pre-merge, pre-jury that you think deserves another shot at the game that didn't get maybe a fair crack or just deserves uh, to play Let's again. throw money out there just for fun, right? Give oh, yeah, shot. definitely money. <laughs> Manwinder himself. Yeah. Of course. And then let's give Zach another shot because he got rocked out. Oh, right? so yeah. Why not? That's, it's just brutal to be rocked yeah. out like that. He's the third person in the series, too. Uh, oh, damn. Yeah, definitely. He joins an elite club, at least. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately. But, well, hey, he he he, net, he left the game without getting a vote cast against that's him. That's true. Right? So that's he did. Also an elite club. He, yeah. He, he definitely. My bad. He definitely uh, got out of there scot-free. So. <laughs> Good for him. Uh, but yeah, so, so Zach and Manwinder, both, yeah. both very good choices for a second chance. Uh, okay, now nice. any final things you want to say or anything you want to Uh No, it's pretty good. I don't know. Hopefully everyone uh, liked my dog and uh, oh, yeah. that's it. Definitely. <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, it was uh, it was fun. I had, I had more fun than I thought. And, uh, you know, I, I liked everybody I played with. There wasn't a single person who I disliked. Mm-hmm. There's a few people I didn't meet, but other than that, really cool cast. Yeah. Um, you know, there were just some people who I wanted to work with more than others, but I genuinely liked everybody that I played with. So all in all, it was a good time. Yeah, it's great to hear. And we really do appreciate uh, having you in and having you help make the game as good as it was. It was a great season. And we appreciate you nice. having ha- having you around the community and then, of course, being able to talk to you today. Thank you for doing this and, and talking yeah, to me. Yeah, my pleasure. Sitting down. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll try and join some games later at some point. But you definitely. guys, like, fuck! It's like, do you guys only turn it on at one in the morning till five? Everything's so late. Every usually it's very late. Sometimes, like last night, we were we were on till uh, or at eight. Uh, so that was that was probably the earliest it's ever been. Uh, okay. I, I think we'll try to get some more stuff earlier because I some of the Armenia people are coming in. Like, wait a minute, this is this is too <laughs> too late wait a minute because the, the people were up to like 3 a.m playing games so uh it goes it goes a while it goes a very long yeah while. but i haven't played most of them so i'm definitely going to check some out uh here and there so yeah definitely we got some good good games i know you played code names uh yeah there's some good secret hitler is a good uh, one that we play yeah i gotta try that too definitely all right well it's good to have you here good to talk to you and just thank you so much again for doing this yeah, nice talk, man. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Have a good one, man. Appreciate it. See ya. See ya. All right, what's up, guys? We're back with another Armenia exit interview. This time we have the one and only Chumbo. How are you doing today, Chumbo? Oh, man, I'm doing great. I'm three beers deep in preparation for this. So, <laughs> uh, great I'm doing hear. great. I'm doing great. <laughs> awesome to hear. Awesome to hear. Well, I'm glad you are prepared and all ready. Uh, I do have some questions for you, obviously, about the game. Got quite a few questions, actually. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so first thing I really do want to ask you is, uh, how does it feel now that you're out of the game? It's been a few days. Is it like a, a decompressing period? Is it kind of a relief to be sort of out of the realm of the game? What's what's the feeling there? Yeah, you know, I, I do think it took me a little while. I read through so much stuff. So many, um, I mean, the spec lounge, I read through everyone's confessionals mm-hmm. and, you know, you kind of, you read some stuff that you don't want to see, you <laughs> read some stuff that you do want to see and, you know, it takes some time to kind of decompress that. So I think now I'm perfectly fine and I'm, I'm happy to be out of the game. I'm happy with my game, but obviously there's some things I, uh, I would have changed knowing some things I know now. Yeah, of course. And can you go into detail, like if anything 
like maybe just a few things or one thing that you might change or if you could go back and do differently if you had like a time machine what would you do differently so the biggest thing knowing what i know now the biggest thing i would have done differently is um pre-merge i wouldn't have voted out tobias Uh uh-huh i think we me rachel and jonathan had the opportunity to vote out andy or andrew and we even talked about it in length and that we just never we all just said we liked andy more and that was really andy's game plan honestly and Mm -hmm. um we but thinking back to it we should have voted out andy or andrew because they were closer with Liv and selling and um that that should have been the move but it, but we just liked andy more and it kind of screwed us up you know yeah yeah andy was definitely definitely very likable i was actually talking to him earlier today about it and uh he said he didn't think of course he would say he didn't think it was 100 percent a wrong move for you uh but tobias and james have definitely said otherwise previously uh, did you know just how close Andy was to everybody? Like, did you know their tribe dynamics when you were on this swap tribe? Or was it just like, okay, they're telling me one thing, they're telling me another thing. What Did you know the extent of how James and Tobias were on the bottom, basically? Yeah, so I think they, they really made it clear to us. James uh-huh. and Tobias made us clear that they were on the bottom. And Andrew, well, Andy was really on the top of, of Pativ when we got when we got there yeah and um i think i think the what ended up happening was day one we got there and andy and andrew and james were active Mm -hmm. and tobias was just nowhere to be found we all messaged him we all tried to get in touch with him and we just got nothing from him until like the next morning and he was like yeah i was feeling kind of I was feeling kind of down about the vote and I got, I got pissed off to be honest and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. either way, I think strategically we did know the dynamic. We definitely did. And Mm -hmm. we discussed, we discussed what we should have done and it just, it just, it blew up in our face. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. All right. Well, talking more about the pre-merge, going back to pre-swap, uh, you vote. You guys voted out two very interesting characters in yeah, uh, did. in Joel and Money. And I in 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 Money's exit interview, he even said like you were you were the bane of his not exactly his words, but you were the bane of ex- his existence. You were the reason he went home. Right. Uh, so can you kind of talk <laughs> us through those first two votes about the Green Power Ranger and the Legend Money? <laughs> what happened? Well, there? well, Joel, Joel. And I have an interesting relationship. I'm oh, sure yeah. you know that. <laughs> mm-hmm, definitely. Um, uh, but, like, I, I think I talked to Joel probably more than anyone else did. I don't know if anyone really <laughs> connected yeah. with him. I, I, I talked to him quite a bit, but it was really all about Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> His which, favorite subject. Yeah, he loves it. Which, I mean, thinking back to me making fun of it, which I've I've read what I said and it wasn't nearly as bad as what I remember. Yeah. But um like thinking about making fun of someone's passion kind of makes me feel a little bit weird but Uh-huh. Uh yeah, he he was just inactive to everybody else and he was the easy vote. Mm-hmm. But when it when it comes to Man Winder, Money Oof. Man Winder. Uh-huh. That vote was a little bit different cuz we he was he was perfectly fine in the tribe like he was active, he competed in all the challenges perfectly fine like no Mm. one was like bummed about his presence it was just his his gameplay was a bit snaky i actually listened to um his exit interview and that's when i that's when i messaged you like oh yeah i gotta do one of these Mm -hmm. but um his exit interview he talked about me being the bane of his existence when he told me that hannah was an enemy and in that moment, I was like, well, Hannah's my number one ally right now. Yeah. So that can't be true for me. So see you later, Man Winder is kind of how my uh, my process, my thought process was on that. But mm-hmm. yeah, he, he, he was a great person. He was fun to talk to. He was fun to strategize with. But overall, his game plan and my game plan just didn't match. So see you later. 
Yeah, and th- that makes a lot of sense. You gotta, especially if someone's targeting your number one, you gotta just like draw the line somewhere. Right. Obviously. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. And yeah. so yeah, we already talked about the 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 swap vote a little bit with uh, your regrets there. Uh, then I want to go kind of into the merge. Then mm-hmm. go on to the merge vote. Uh, that first vote very hectic. You were eligible to draw uh the bad rock. Uh, can you just talk us through kind of what what was the happenings in the merge vote? What was your thought process going into it? Uh, with you know James flipping, playing his idol, potentially going to rocks. Just what from your point of view, what happened that round? So I'll go actually a little bit further back. Before we yeah. got to the merge, James had told me that he had the idol. Oh, okay. so I knew I knew James had the idol, and I had this whole plan in my head where I would convince the other side, which was um andy andrew selling Liv, and zach to vote for james Mm -hmm. everyone just jump on him and i think what my my original plan (laughs) included was that i was going to tell people that i had the idol so that Mm -hmm. james so that people wouldn't worry about james having it but Mm -hmm. i kind of um i kind of got freaked out about doing that because it would put a target on me yeah so i I didn't end up doing that so come that first vote, I knew everybody. Well, I, I knew that we were voting for Selen because Lewis and James both painted this picture of her like she was some sort of conniving game manipulator, which I guess was partly true. But I think the, uh, the threat level that was painted on her was much higher than it actually was. Mm-hmm. Um. So we voted for her. They voted for Lewis, which we should have, which I actually told James too. It's like, hey, would you be willing to play your idol for Lewis? I mean, why would they vote for you? Even if I'm telling them to vote for you, why would they do that? Yeah. And I told him to vote for, or uh, to uh, play his idol on Lewis. And he just said he'd rather play it for himself, which I completely understand. Like, he's been burned, what, three times already at that point. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, he, he doesn't trust anybody. And I, I think him and I had built enough trust at that point where he maybe even considered it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, it was something he was planning on doing ever. So, but yeah, th- that, that vote sucked. And then, yeah, so I put myself in a position to potentially go home in that moment. It was, it was me and Jonathan on our side and it was, what was it? Zach, uh, Liv Andy. and, and Andy on the other side, and they all, they all stayed true to it. And I, unfortunately, Zach went home, but I'm just glad it wasn't me. Yeah, exactly. Hey, better for you guys. And then, of course, after the rocks, famously, Lewis then flipped immediately afterwards after people go to rocks for him. I know there was a lot of talk from Lewis about trying to get you to flip with him. What what was happening that round? Like you were talking to Lewis throughout the whole thing, correct? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so Lewis was super open with me. He wanted me to flip with him to go to uh, live and sell. And am I saying her name right, by the way? Yeah, I think it's Selin, 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 I believe. Selin, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so he wanted me to flip with Liv and Selin. And I, my thought process was, like, there's no way for me in, like, an alliance of four there that Andy and Andrew still aren't above me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I I, I saw myself finishing like sixth, sixth, if I flipped over there. Mm -hmm. And, and if I actually stayed with my side, I didn't see it ending much better, but it it ended up ending, ending a little better, but. Oh, definitely. But, um, yeah, so he, he tried to pull me over. He, he, he talked about how much he not trusted selling or, or live, but he really, when talking to live, I think what his thought process was that she's a gamer. Like she understands this game. She's someone you want to be aligned with rather than go against, Mm -hmm. which I think was completely true and a fair assessment of her. But in my, I literally just as, um, he was asking me this, I had just nailed down a final two pack with Rachel, Mm -hmm. like, like just did it. And, (laughs) 
and I, I, I just, for me, I wasn't willing to go back on that, like just to completely throw under the bus right away. And, yeah. and, and I, I do think, I do think my game ended better the way it went than what it would have happened if I went the other way. So, mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So. Uh, do you think for Lewis personally, cause I, I know this is controversial. Do you think for Lewis's game, it was better that he flipped? Like, was he really like as on the bottom of your guys' alliance as he thought he was? Um, yeah, so I, I, I talked about this in my confessionals quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do think the move made sense from his, uh, standpoint, but like if, if I had my way, which I, I feel like I, I did have my way with my alliances, mm-hmm. um, he could have gotten to final three easily or final four. And then, and then he could have just won every immunity from there. Like if he, if he saw it from that standpoint like he was gonna beat all of us we all sucked at challenges Mm -hmm. so like me jonathan and rachel were pretty uh pretty bad at challenges so like it would be the final five would be me james jonathan rachel and lewis james would be the first one out probably yeah and then and then lewis would most likely win those challenges but i think i think looking at it from his perspective it definitely makes sense that he made that move thinking he could have a final three with Liv and Zelen. Mm-hmm. But from my perspective, he was he was going to the final two with me. And then once he said he was flipping, I was like, all right, it's got to be someone else. So I picked Rachel and Rachel yeah. picked me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's tough because I, I do think if he came with us, we're, we're final five. And mm-hmm. he finishes, I mean, he finished fifth, right? Is that what Yeah, he finished? he finished fifth. So, so either way, he either does the same or does better. And in my, and if he stayed with me, I would have done everything in my power to get him to go to the end with me. So, of course, yeah, gotcha. And that was, yeah, that was that was kind of my game plan. It was I I create lo- I created loyalties, and I stuck to him. And for better or for worse, that was mm-hmm. um, that was really my game plan. It wasn't originally what I wanted to do, but it really ended up being my uh, my go to move. <laughs> No, it makes a lot of sense. And it definitely, I will say, it definitely helped you with the jury. I think that's a big reason why the jury was so high on you for the whole game is because you didn't burn them. You were you were loyal to them and you showed loyalty, especially to the people who went uh, who went earlier. Right. Yeah. yeah Rachel, James and uh, and even Jonathan, after after he got voted out, I voted for him. But my mm-hmm. whole thought process was everyone after that had to at least think I was with them for you know, at least one vote, you know, that was at least yeah, my thought of course. process on that. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. No, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it got to a point, honestly, in the game where I I didn't have a strategic move. Like, I couldn't do anything. Like, if I said some something to Lewis, who I trusted, I trusted him, what he was telling me, but if I said something to him, it it got to Celine, it got to live, it got to Andy, everything I said was being thrown around and it just, it kind of screwed my whole game up. But that's, that's what happened. Once he flipped, I was on the bottom. I went from being what I thought was the top to just being thrown right to the bottom. And I can't even like game plan mm-hmm. any moves. And it, it kind of got annoying at one point where like, I couldn't, I couldn't even try to. And if I did try, it instantly got blown up. So that, yeah. that's kind of where i got screwed strategically yeah i know i completely understand that when you're playing on the bottom it's like especially in your case it could have everybody else was very tight so it's very easy to just have it all thrown against you right uh yeah that makes sense uh i want to talk a little bit as well about the whole live situation and the rachel boot because that was when the spectators were watching that we were like what is happening this is this is crazy that was probably one of the more insane rounds uh so can you just like walk us through what happened so when uh Liv approached your group with the plan to blindside Solin, and then what happened from your perspective and what kind of ensued okay okay <laughs> <laughs> so i was kind of just minding my own business trying to figure out what we were going to do me rachel and jonathan what we were going to do mm-hmm and all of a sudden, Rachel reaches out to me and says that Liv is planning on blindsiding Selin. Mm-hmm. 
And I instantly, I'm like, nope, no, she's not. She's just lying to us, trying to confuse us and keep us from making moves on our own, which in it, in that sense made sense. I was like, all right, so she's just trying to steer us in a different direction so they can make their move. And we're just going to put three votes on somebody and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, but then she said, Rachel told me that Liv came to her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well that that's weird then. It's real weird. Yeah. So Liv ended up, she just messaged me and it said, or her first message was, so I think we should talk. (laughs) Oh boy. And, yeah, and in that moment, I was like, yeah, I think we should. I like, I feel, and then I, I basically called her out. I was like, I don't get why you're doing this. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Are mm-hmm. you definitely telling the truth? And she, she said, yeah, I mean, I got some weird vibes from Celine today and weird vibes from Lewis. And she just, she got paranoid. And I, once I realized that that was actually the truth, I was fully on board with going going in on that move with me, Liv, Rachel, Jonathan, and if she could pull in Andrew, that, that just being the move. Yeah. Um, and then, but before all that, like right when I found out, like right when Rachel told me, um, I reached out to Lewis mm-hmm. and this is where I, uh, I kind of screwed up the whole plan, but not really. Mm-hmm. Um, I screwed up her whole plan in saying that I was like, Hey, so is selling targeting? I mean, is uh live uh, targeting selling? And he was like, no, that's not happening. 100% not happening. Doesn't make any sense. And then I guess he talked to them and she had to do some damage control. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But from, from then on, like I was full on in on that plan. She said she was going to try to flip Andrew. And so we were waiting, we were waiting, we waited and then all of a sudden, boom, four or five votes are cast. Yep. And we're just like, what What the fuck? What just happened? Yeah. So we instantly, like, you you see, you saw it. Rachel just went off in mm-hmm. tribal council. Like, what, what are you guys doing? Like, uh, you're selling your names being brought up, but not by us, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was, it was kind of awesome. It was a little, um, edgy <laughs> uh-huh. but um but I, I loved it i mean it had to happen for us to even try to keep rachel in the game oh definitely and and unfortunately we weren't able to spread the truth well we were able to spread the truth it just wasn't they just didn't believe it yeah uh-huh and i mean you didn't even believe it at first so exactly so like the whole story made absolutely no sense to uh-huh. me, ever ever and I, I i told that to everybody that i was spilling the beans to. hey so I know this is going to make no sense and you're probably going to think I'm lying, but this is what's happening. It's uh-huh. Liv is targeting Celine and she's trying to pull in Andrew and she has all three of us, but she didn't tell us that it, that Andrew wasn't going to do it. So she ended up voting for Rachel. And I was like, so I told Lewis that I told Celine that I told Andy that, and they all didn't believe me at all. So yeah, at that point I got blackballed. No one talked to me for like, I don't know, 18 hours. It felt like Uh it it was probably less than that, but it felt like a really long time. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's where it kind of, my game blew up and that's when I decided to do something against what I thought was right. Like I, I, I honestly, I've caught some heat from some people about, um, I even heard men Winder say it about, um, copy and pasting the the chat logs. Mm Mm-hmm. But I think what he was referring to was me telling them about Hannah. Yeah, I think so. I think he was. All I all I said that I literally just typed that um that man Winder thinks you're an enemy. I didn't I didn't copy him. Yeah, it. yeah. I, I I expected as much. Yeah, but mm-hmm. but yeah. So the 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 chat logs were kind of something I was against, but I did it, and it was really just to save me, because I think I was going home next if I didn't, so uh-huh. that, that's really where my head was at with that one. Yeah, and no, I, I mean, I, I completely understand the whole chat log thing. There's no rule against it. There's nothing saying you can't do that, uh, and I, I think uh, we might look at it in the future, but of course for this season, like, obviously, it's allowed, 
completely mm -hmm. allowed by you. So completely fair game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, ju the jury wasn't a fan of it, but I, they were still very much a fan of you. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. So so how Liv got blown up was the chat logs and not Liv coming clean. That is that correct? Yeah, so I sent the chat logs to Andy because he was the only person to reach out to me, which yeah. which literally changed my game. Like he, him being the person to reach out to me made me loyal to him in that moment. But I did say to him, like right when he reached out, he was like, hey, man, sorry I didn't talk to you last night. And I was like, that's all right. I just I was trying to just get some info to you just so you knew about Liv's move. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he goes, dude, come on. No one believes that give it up and i was like dude i'll send you the i'll screen or i won't screenshot i'll, I'll copy and paste the conversation to you if yeah. you want and he goes if you can that'd be great and then that's when i sent them so mm -hmm. and then from that moment on he sent the chat logs to to uh to lewis and they somehow got to Selin and and at that point Liv was uh... she either had to she either had to make the choice to lie about my the logs being fake or just own up to it and i think that's where so yeah, yeah she owned up to it and that's when it became officially real but yeah i think i think that the copy and paste really kind of uh screwed her game up for sure yeah yeah definitely all right and and just so you know when i sent those copy and paste i wanted it to just be a copy and paste into her into uh andy's you know my, him and i's dm yeah but it ended up sending as a file because it was bigger than 2000 words. And that, yeah, was really, of course, of course. That's why I, I felt weird about it. Even weirder about it. Then I was like, Shh, well, whatever. Uh huh. Yeah. And that happens. Obviously you can only send such big messages on discord. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. I gotcha. And so then of course, you know, Liv gets blown up. I don't think there was any chance she ever stayed that round. Correct. No, I mean, I guess, I guess what Andy was saying at, during final travel council is that he wanted her to stay. And they were going to try to come for me, but mm -hmm. that didn't happen. No dice, yeah. Yeah, no dice. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, okay, and I want to move a, a little bit forward onto the, the final four vote and everything that happened at that one. Because that mm. ended up being, uh, what, 3-1 on Andrew? Did you What, what was happening that round? Because I know that one went pretty quick. So what happened yeah, so there? Me... Andy and Andrew had all talked about voting out Salin. Mm -hmm. That was like originally the thought process. Yeah. And then I guess um, I started talking to Salin about making moves and she was like, uh, she just didn't want to go home. And I guess she's, she's pretty persuasive mm -hmm. in her ways. You know, she's, she's super social. She's able to convince people to do things, which I think is a, a huge testament to her game. And, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, she kind of convinced me and Andy kind of convinced me to get all the goats out, mm -hmm. which made me feel it kind of boosted my ego. Them saying that I wasn't a goat and that, on all oh, yeah. that. But so I think I think them kind of like boosting my ego in that moment really kind of made me go against Andrew. And but it sucks because thinking back to that moment with with full hindsight, I 100 percent should have made Andrew and Celin go to um go to fire mm -hmm. i don't know what the fire would have been but that that was the smarter move for sure and i kind of that's probably my second biggest regret of the game is not letting them go to fire because there's a chance that if andy and Celine vote for andrew and i put a vote on Celine with andrew that i get to the end with andrew if he ends up winning that final immunity challenge because i voted with him who knows i mean it, it's tough to it's tough to kind of predict the future in that scenario but yeah i think that that's my second biggest regret of the game yeah and that makes sense and then even as i was talking to andy and solen earlier and, and they talked about i think at final travel council too the thought of them two one wanting you sending you home that was also of course didn't happen but there was also an opportunity there so in the spectator lounge watching that we were like we saw you put in your vote for uh andrew and we were like are they gonna are they gonna vote him out but of course, it didn't. End, it ended up being three one on Andrew. So, right. Yeah. I, I was. I was a little. Uh, I didn't know who to trust in that. In that moment. Yeah. I kinda, of course. I, I talked to Celine the most that night, and uh, I think just like the way she was talking, the way that she she claims that she's not a liar, 
Um, mm-hmm. And she said she had said that to me before. And I was like, all right, well, she if she says she's voting for Andrew, then she's probably going to actually vote for Andrew. And I just went with it. And that, that was kind of that was kind of my move. And then Andrew was one of the people I trusted the least. So like him telling me he was voting for Celine, I'm like, well, I don't know if that's uh, real. Yeah, I exactly. Do think, I do think Celine is telling me the truth. And I, I feel like Andy actually at this point, I thought Andy was my real final two. Mm-hmm. Well, he was my real final two. I wasn't his, but yeah. Um, so I, I did. I trusted him and he was saying vote for Andrew as well. So that's the way I went. Yeah. And so it worked out at least in that scenario. Uh, you make yeah. it to final three, make it to final or final immunity challenge. Of course, you know, Andy dominates final immunity challenge in classic Andy fashion. Yeah, he's, uh, he's an animal. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you do you think there was ever a chance he takes you over Solin? Do you think there was anything you could have said or done? Um, Looking back at like what I actually said, um, <laughs> I probably could have said more um game related stuff but me and andy's relationship was based on us being just like complete weirdos together like we would just talk about like the most random stuff and i i think that's why i was like not attracted to him but that's why i like i was sucked into his his you know gravitational pull yeah of course because he's weird i felt like being weird and he like made me weirder (laughs) (laughs) and 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 that's basically what i said in my uh in my little speech to him, it was just like, dude, we, you and I had like the weirdest conversations. We're both the biggest weirdos. And now knowing how weird freaking Selena is, that that was definitely wrong. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I definitely could have said, I could have said more um, game related stuff to try to maybe convince him. And if I, I, don't, I don't even know what it would be, because mm-hmm. I mean, I lied to him. He lied to me. He she saw me as the biggest threat. I saw him as the biggest threat. I told him that. He told me that. I mean, mm-hmm. like we we had this relationship that was strictly like social. Like we we really did, didn't make game moves together. Although we voted together quite a bit at the end. There it was. Uh, I mean, our whole relationship was just based on us being. I mean, just strange people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah. And then so you get you do eventually get voted out. What's the reaction when you go into the jury and you see all this love and like oh, everybody's yeah. going to vote for you? What, what is it like? Is it like kind of does, is it a good feeling cuz you see everyone's going to vote for you or is it a bad feeling cuz like, oh, I just made it one one round further. Right. Yeah, no, that 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 was uh I'd say my first instinct was like I was pretty bummed out. Mhm. Like seeing all that, I was just like Damn, I would have freaking won Survivor Armenia. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm, yeah. Are you kidding me? So, like, I, I knew I was a threat, but I thought maybe I would get uh, possibly four votes. You know, mm-hmm. I thought I, w- I would get Jonathan, I'd get James, and I would get Rachel. Mm-hmm. And then Liv would vote for Selena or Andy. Andrew would vote for Selena or Andy. And then Lewis was really the – who was the other person there? Is there someone else I'm missing? Uh, Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, yeah. So he he would vote for um Andy or Celine. And then Lewis was really the split vote. And that was my thought process. I was like, okay, so we're gonna go to a four three. Someone's gonna win that way if I get to the end. So I tried to at least throw that towards Andy, but it turns out that I would have got every vote. And then yeah. so it, once I saw that, I was like, damn. That kind of bummed me out, but then immediately after that, I was like, "Shit, I'm the fucking man." Dude. <laughs> These people like me a lot, mm-hmm. and I, I knew I knew my social game was was really my uh, my saving grace. But um, I, that's not how I planned on playing this game. I wanted to be strategic. I wanted to kind of make moves, but that's it. Ended up being the opposite of that, which I'm down with. It ended up working a little bit. Yeah, of course. I do want to say everybody. Pretty much everybody I've talked to, especially Andy, has attested to your amazing social game. So that's probably a why such a big reason uh, that everybody everybody just loved you. Basically, is what it is. Yeah. What is so I to? think I think about like when when um, after James got voted out and it was five four. When it was five on their alliance and it was four on ours, I was thinking like, why why would they not vote me out right now? You know, that, that mm-hmm. I was just thinking, like, why are they going to keep Jonathan, Rachel, and 
And uh, yeah, it was actually, was it 5-4 or was it 5-3? Four three. Uh, either four, way, three, four, three. either way, I, I like why I just didn't get why they were keeping me over Jonathan and that why they were keeping me over Rachel, and it really just spoke to my social game with my connections with Andy and Lewis, them wanting to them like protecting me for some reason. Mm-hmm. You know, I turned into this hero because of them just keeping me in the game. I didn't really have a say in it. I tried my best to have a say in it, but them wanting me to stay in the game because my personality <laughs> uh-huh. it really it, it, it made me feel good but it was like it didn't make a whole lot of sense game wise i should have been out of that game like eighth or eighth or seventh mm-hmm. yeah definitely uh and then so we we get to the final two and you eventually vote for Celine. can you tell us kind of your thought process on how that whole final tribal council went and then why you did end up voting for her over andy Yes. So, I mean, I, I posted something in my confessionals about, um, about how it was about dungeons and dungeons and whatever uh, that game's called, D&D. D&D, yeah. That, that wasn't really the full reason. It was more about me being salty. You know, like, I, I got burned by Andy. I got burned by him. I, I thought, like, he brought me to the final three. And I'll, I, 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 if I could go back, honestly, I would probably vote for Andy now. Mm-hmm. But, um... I'm glad he won, and I would have been glad if Celine won. They both completely deserved it. But I think what my thought process was at the time was, like, I, I wanted answers right away. And I think my, my, my brain was just so impatient, and the fact that he just wasn't there and he was doing something else kind of bugged me, and I'm sure it bugged other jurors. Oh, but, yeah, definitely. Um, so that, it played a small, small, small part in it, but... Overall, I think it was just me being salty with Andy and him lying to me and then having and then finding out he had final twos with like three other people on the jury. I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? This kid was just working us, dude. He, he, yeah, we all like it was all of most of our first orbs, right? I mean, it was just me, Liv and Andy who had done one before. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. And Andy had done 14. <laughs> yeah. So like, like that, that's he just knew he knew what he was going to do and how he was going to do it a little bit better than all of us. And he, he deserved to win. And like I said, I'd go back and I'd vote for him, but Celine deserved my vote as well. She, her, I heard tribal council. So let me go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, When Andy told me that he was going to vote me out, he went into my, uh, our DM and he told me, Hey man, um, I'm going to take Celine to the end. And I, I, I tried to do one last pitch and it was probably the worst pitch in the history of trying to keep myself <laughs> in the game. I was like, dude, yeah, it'll be close. <laughs> Man. But, uh, mm-hmm. Which I, which uh, I don't think he was going to take me either way, no matter what I said, but yeah. Um, so yeah, he told me that he was going to vote me out and I instantly went to Celine and I told her like, Hey, I know you probably know this, but I need to see you completely own your game like you've played the naive person you've played the like you feel like you're being attacked person you've done you've done all that to get yourself to this point and it's been helpful but like you were a threat okay own that you were a threat and i will give you my vote like you have to just completely own it mm-hmm. you know like i hated the way like if you if you i, I told her in the game like yeah you, you're doing so good and she like got so offended she was like oh i just think you're gonna vote me out now you yeah. know and which I get, like I get feeling attacked, but that wasn't like an attack. It was me being chumba. Yeah, you know? yeah, of course. And uh, I don't know. I just think, I just think the way she handled tribal council, being attacked by so many from so many different angles about so many different things, um, the way she handled it really just impressed me. And I, I gave her my vote for that. And and the fact that Andy lied to too many people, which is completely part of Survivor, but. I don't know. I was just salty at the at that time. So yeah, no, and it makes a lot of sense. You you jurors always have the right to be salty, especially when you find out you know your final two had final twos with like four other people in the game. Right. So yeah, that, it, ma- it makes that. a lot of sense. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That gives us some good good insight. I think on your vote and on on everything that happened. Uh, just looking forward to uh next season. It's gonna be uh all stars, of course. Who do you think yeah. from your season? deserves to be on all stars and do you think you deserve to be on all stars what's your what's your kind of take on that um 
Yeah, so I'll start with who I think should be on All Stars. Um, I see Andy, Liv, Celine, Lewis, and me. Yeah, so I, I do I do think I belong on uh, All Stars. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd actually do it, depending on when it is. Yeah, I <laughs> but, hear you. But um, yeah, I, I think I think there were some really good players in this season, especially for people who hadn't ever played before. You know, it was, oh, yeah. it was pretty impressive. And I think my game, like my pre-merge game, not going to lie, was, was flawless. Mm-hmm. It, it was, was flawless. Mm-hmm. It was flawless. And when I think back to that, like, it bums me out just how, it, how quickly that blew up when the merge came. And, oh, man, it, just, it, it sucks because I had a final five. I was going to go into that final five, dominate that final five, and then win this game. That was my whole entire plan. Mm-hmm. And, and then, I don't know, Lewis. Lewis, yeah, if you're Lewis. listening to this, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> you really I love you. I love you, man. I love you. But um, yeah, so I, I, I think I belong in in the next All Star season. But there are people who probably deserve it a little more than me. And I'd say Andy and and Liv. They, 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 they're the two smartest people in this season. They, they may like just talking to them. You could tell that. Uh, they knew what they were doing. I think Liv's move just kind of came at the wrong time. And yeah. the way, and I think what it was actually at the right time, it was just the way it was handled was, was bad. Like if she came yeah. to us, if she came to us and said, Hey, I couldn't get Andrew to flip before she voted. Mm-hmm. May, maybe just maybe I don't do me and Rachel don't do what we did, but because I would have told Rachel, like, hey, this is still my only chance to actually make it further in this game. Can we try to, can we go just try to accept this, I guess? It would have sucked, because, like, I don't know how it, uh, Rachel would have handled that, because it was her name being written down, but. Yeah. I do, I think Liv and Andy are probably the two biggest all-star reps from our season. Well, aside from me, but. Of course, of course, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then is there anything else you feel like you haven't said yet that should be said or anything else you want to say to the people listening right now? Um, Steve from, uh, what's that guy's name? Steve. Oh, Big Steve Moose. the Moose. Yeah. Fuck you too. <laughs> he deserves That's it. it. That's my final word. That's your final words. It's some great final words right there. <laughs> Jumbo, it was a blast having having you on on the season and then having you it, do this this exit interview. I appreciate it so much. Uh, no you're problem, fantastic. Man. You're fantastic. Yeah, and if you do feel like having me back, just let me know. I'll uh, I'll consider it heavily. Of course, definitely. Got to. I've got to get to talking with uh, the main host, Boar. But we'll 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 see what we'll see what happens with All Stars. We'll see. All right, man. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it so much. Again, thank you so much for doing this. And thank you. Yeah, just have a good one, man. I appreciate it. Armenia, thank you, Armenia. <laughs> thank you, Armenia, for for hosting our season. Exactly, the yeah. country. <laughs> it's such a good country. Oh yeah, I love it. I I really yeah. know nothing about it except for that one idol clue. That city. one. The one city. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. I I'll, I'll be honest. Tazagazagazor. <laughs> Is that how you pronounce it? No, no idea. Oh okay. <laughs> I I would have believed you. <laughs> Hundred percent. Right. All right, but yeah, yeah. Thank. You. Okay. Hello, everyone. Today we are here with yet another exit interview. Today we're here with the runner-up of Survivor Armenia, Celine. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Nice. Good you love to hear it. <laughs> All right. So first thing I have to ask: It's what two days, something like that, yeah. since since the game has ended. How has it felt? Has it been like? A relief to be out of the game or is it like kind of like a withdrawal from talking to everybody for so long what, what's the feelings right now i mean i think because i was in the game until the very end for me it was kind of a relief mm-hmm. um a because my phone like not having to answer my phone every single time it goes mm-hmm. off is like very relaxing Mm -hmm. yeah and then and then also um just i don't know i feel like something that's a part of the game that's not part of life is having to like make sure that people didn't take certain things you said the wrong way or whatever Mm -hmm. like i don't know getting paranoid about very like small meaningless interactions with other people mm-hmm. and i don't like to do that <laughs> in my <laughs> real life i mean like i in, in survivor it's a part of the game it's what mm-hmm, you do. yeah 
But like in real life, it's not something, I mean, like you're not grilling people on whether they took a certain thing you said the wrong way. And even if they did, it's like, that's their prerogative. So Mm -hmm. I mean, that to me was very relieving, but I mean, I do miss it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, It's like a relief, but it's also like, like, like missing it. Like you said, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. well, that's, that's good. I'm sure, like, it, it's a weight off everybody's back getting out of the game, especially, uh, after the, the final tribal council we saw. I do want to ask just a little bit about the final tribal council. Yeah. Uh, so going into it, what did you think was going to happen? And then once everybody kind of came out guns blazing, what was kind of going through your head? Okay. So, I mean, I knew I wasn't going to have an easy time per se, cause I had seen, some of the reactions I was getting to things I said in tribal. Mm-hmm. Um, and I tried to address them there, but like, I guess my addressing them just came off as passive aggressive, which <laughs> I mean, there was nothing I could do yeah. to <laughs> really resolve that at the time. No. But the thing, but I mean, like me and Andy had come into this with good attitudes. You know, we wanted, mm-hmm. we thought it was going to be more, I think, questioning us basically on like who played the better game overall and at the time going in i really thought that like okay people haven't seen my game like i have all of these like moves that i made all these things that i could get into about like how i was really i mean and i you know i hate to give myself compliments but like i really felt like i was controlling a lot yeah in the season, I, I mean, I really felt like me and Andy were just 100% running the game up until the end. Mm-hmm. And so I wasn't expecting it to be so personal. And I think what surprised me the most was this perception that I didn't, that I did some, did live wrong by the way that mm-hmm. I, she had left the game when she was the one who went against me. So it was kind of like, well, I mean, I didn't I didn't go against <laughs> her, you know. I didn't yeah. betray her. And like, yes, it's a part of the game and everything. So like in real life, that's not something I'm as angry about, I guess. But mm-hmm. I really tried like from a perspective of jury management, I really tried with her to like and I I always I mean, personally, I appreciate it when people are honest with me. Like it it makes me respect people when they're honest with me. So I felt that because I had been honest with her about why a vote from me might go her way. But, you know, I, I soon found out that everyone would have preferred it if I just lied. So, uh-huh. You know, but I mean, yeah, I was surprised that people were so angry with me. I definitely think I was held to a different standard. But I also think Andy did an incredible job. And even if I hadn't been held to a def- different standard as I felt I was being held to, um, I still would have been over the moon if he won. And like, yeah, mad props to him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, it definitely felt like from an outside perspective, looking in in the spectator lounge, that they were being overly critical of your game and not asking Andy a lot of questions. So we, we, we yeah. definitely felt it felt it out here. Yeah. Uh, Rachel's Rachel's like final tribal speech was basically like Celine like die in a hole and Andy my prince I love you. <laughs> uh-huh. At that point when I saw that I was like okay this is how it's going to go. You're, so. you're in for it. But even with <laughs> yeah. all of that questioning you handled yourself extremely well. Uh okay. can you can, yeah can, can you tell us a little bit like how you got yourself into the mindset like okay I'm being I'm being my game's being attacked here. I'm being attacked here. I gotta just calm down. It, was it pretty hard to to not say something you would might regret later? I mean, I think like the thing is is that I had legitimate reasons why I felt like I should win. Mm-hmm. Like I had this mapped out for myself, like different stages of the game, different things that I had done. Like I felt like the facts were on my side, mm-hmm. so. I, it wasn't necessary for me, at least, to, like, get angry about minor things. And at the end of the day, when you're sitting at Final Tribal Council and all these people who were voted out before you are coming up to you and yelling at you, you're kind of still in a position. I mean, like, you're not the one making the vote, but you still beat everybody else. Mm-hmm. 
So it's kind of like, yeah, of course they're going to be bitter. Of course they're going to be upset. Of course, like they're going to feel like they were screwed in some regard. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was more, it was, I was, it, it wasn't something I intentionally like put myself in that mindset. I just had the facts on my side and I love arguing with people. So, <laughs> that probably I, helps I, I with my family council. People, so it's not something I, I mean, like I'm used to that. Mm -hmm. I, it's, I've been in that position before. I feel comfortable there. So I wasn't, yeah. Yeah. So you were kind of in your own I was, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And it definitely paid off making the vote extremely close, 4 3, up until the last minute. Uh, yeah. Well, the last minute where Jonathan voted, up until then, we had the host had no idea who was going to win. Uh, so props <laughs> to you for turning, turning that uh, extremely around. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize I was gonna have to like uh -huh. turn it around so much, but like I said, the facts were on my side, and I think if anyone, I I honestly wonder if anybody truly read through my final jury speech. And Andy and I were talking about this in PMs while it was happening, um, because basically, like Andy was getting asked questions he had answered in his speech and I was getting asked questions that I had answered in my speech. Mm -hmm. And I knew my speech was long, but I was kind of like, well, you know, everything you need to know about my game is in this speech. Mm -hmm. So, but then I think some people just wanted to vent um, how they were feeling at me. So, yeah, I think that's definitely, that's, de that's definitely a part of it. A lot of people were feeling a lot of emotions and even though final tribal council is really not the place for that, uh, yes. they did so anyways. Uh, we're definitely going to have some, some regulations in place for final tribal council in the future. Cause that was pretty tough to watch yeah. from, so well, think, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think, I think the, that'll help. But, yeah. uh, but yeah, even still, you know, it turned out really close. What did you think about the, the final vote count four three? Are you almost, are you like, you almost had it or are you just happy I, you got yeah. that? Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. I was, I mean, after final, the thing is, I think the, where I lost Rachel's vote, I think I got Rachel's vote and then I lost it again mm -hmm. because I think Rachel is a lot more emotional than she wants people to think she is mm -hmm. and when Shambo asked us that question which was the worst question oh my god about who we would remove from the jury that was such a hard mm. difficult question uh -huh. Andy has a an easier time being di diplomatic I think than I do and it was easier for him to be diplomatic in that final tribal because he wasn't getting grilled mm -hmm. um, I think if people were yelling at him the way that he was yelling at me he might have felt like answer that question differently yeah. but um I, for me it was you know like you said i i was really expecting it to only be about the game and when time after time people made personal attacks against me and then we're like that's not personal or you know mm -hmm. or you know just doing things that were not necessary just to be mean um, mm -hmm. and they expected me not to, they thought, oh, because we have the power, we're in final tribal, we have the vote. Or, well, Rachel was like, I have a vote. It, it was kind of like, you can't just attack people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even if you yeah. are in this position where you got voted out and I didn't, like, it, it's not necessary. And like, to expect, like, yes, you could be, you could say like, oh, it's not my time to be emotional. But I never, ever attacked Rachel like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I don't feel I did anything to her to deserve the way she was talking about me and talking to me. And not just there, but like throughout the game, like when the uh, Rachel vote happened, I mean, in that tribal, I really wanted to ask her. I mean, you're telling me I had bad jury management, but if I had gone home that tribal, like, the way you were talking in tribal council, she wouldn't have had my jury vote. Mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, I think I just, at that point I was like, okay, um, I might not even get Rachel's vote anyway. And I'm not going to lie. I just, it, for me, it was very important to be 
extremely upfront with people and just say, this is how I played my game. I still think that my, the way I played the game was a lot more difficult than the way Andy played the game because it's Mm -hmm. so much easier to just lie. Yeah. You know, but I was more concerned about people trusting my word than I was about people. um, Like than I was about getting things the way I exactly wanted them, Uh I guess. So, yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know if that answers your question. That does. That does answer my question. Yes. So, okay. uh, what were your thoughts as well when Andy revealed that he has definitely played more than more than once? What were your thoughts that he wasn't a newbie and that he kind of knew his way? Oh my god! Totally relieved. I was so relieved. Mm-hmm. Did it... it made me. It made me like a thousand percent less salty. Uh huh. Just knowing. Because I was like, well, this guy, he knows what he's doing. And I even said this in some of my confessionals. I was like, like, and he knows what he's doing. He knows how to, like, talk to people. Like, I've seen him do it before, da 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 So for me, it was like, well, this guy, he knew what he was doing. He had experiences where he was voted out before. He was able to reflect on those experiences and, like, with this knowledge, come into the game and dominate it. Um. Mm -hmm. And it actually made me even more proud of myself because I was like, man, I almost, you know, won this season. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I was going up against somebody who's played numerous times, probably been in numerous final tribal councils. I mean, you Mm -hmm. know, been in the jury probably numerous times. And so after that, I was like, wow, I really killed it. Like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) that was awesome. So I wasn't, I mean, he said he was worried, I think in his last video confessional about telling me like that he was a veteran of the game, but it just made me, I mean, all it did was make me more impressed with myself. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And rightfully so. Right. Yeah. I I feel Well, yeah, I guess so. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. I'm proud of it. <laughs> okay, that's good. That you should be proud of it. Yeah. Uh so then uh throughout the game you were definitely in danger a lot, specifically at the the merge boot and the one right before the merge boot with <laughs> Lewis's idol. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh the merge boot, Zach going home and and the rocks? What was going through your head? Oh just my god. Throughout that, throughout that whole <laughs> round and then when you received the votes, can, can you just kind of explain what was what was all happening that round? I mean, I first of all was totally, totally blown away that people went to rocks for me. Like I mm-hmm. wouldn't have expected that at all. Um but you know at the time when it happened, I was very confused, except for the fact that I knew that Lewis would tell them that he Mm -hmm. thought I was this huge threat. So that was my, because I honestly thought that they would go for Liv again if they had James on their side, because James at the time was painting Liv out to be the big social threat, Mm -hmm. not me, Yeah, which I was happy with at the time. Um, And I had had good conversations with pretty much everyone who was on the Miocene, the original Miocene tribe. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised because... I really, I was interested in working with a lot of them. I mean, it was, uh, Rachel, I, I thought she was great. I would have wanted to work with her. Um, but, but I think, you know, I was trying to mitigate my threat level. And I think, like, I went too far. And a part of it was also just, like, real time freaking out. Like, oh, my God, my, my name's getting written down. My name's getting written down. Like, mm-hmm. why is my name getting written down? It was a combination of both. Um, and I was very surprised that people went to rocks for me, but what that made me realize was like, oh my God, I do have a pretty good handle on this group of people because all these people went to rocks for me. And how many people was that? No, and none of them were safe. You mm-hmm. know, Zach went to rocks for me. Andy went to rocks for me. Andrew went to rocks for me. Liv. I mean, all of these people went to rocks for me. So like, they must like me. You know, and I think that was something I didn't expect to do well at in the game, too, that I ended up doing pretty well at, which also came again with the live vote. Because, I mean, part of it was that I had won immunity. But when after Rachel was voted out, we found out that they had all been telling the truth and live actually did try to vote me out. Mm -hmm. Um, 
everyone basically was just like, I'm so sorry this happened to you. Like that's so awful and shady and da 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 da. Like you didn't deserve that. And it, I was kind of like, oh my God, like these people are willing to just vote this person out. And I knew that even if they weren't, like I had reasons I could give them for why Liv should go. Yeah. But I never had to use those. I Like I never had to convince anybody, mm-hmm. which if I had to, I would have been like, well, she just lied so well, like she could lie to any of us. Yeah. Pretty much and get away with it. And mm-hmm. so for me, it was kind of like, wow, OK, people really like do not necessarily want me to be here but like do follow my lead yeah and i wasn't expecting that so yeah mm-hmm. so you definitely felt what... like more of a leader in the game yeah i, <laughs> I didn't mm-hmm. expect that but i guess that's what ended up happening yeah um yeah <laughs> okay nice and then uh I, I i talked about it for a second but the the uh vote where uh hannah went home and lewis played his idol were you guys planning oh, yeah. on were you guys planning to flush out an idol did you think one of them might have had him what was no. the reason for voting for hannah <laughs> over lewis because it kind of seemed like at the beginning of the round like it was clearly going to be lewis you had this kind of girls alliance thing going and then it flipped over to hannah what was the reasoning for that round and what so okay so th- what happened with that was i actually was and you know i'm happy now to have found out that um, like I was it, like after the fact, I I am happy that I that it never went through because it turns out Hannah was never willing to vote out Lewis, mm-hmm. and um, and that that you know to her power, but like that was, I mean, it was we were gonna have to vote somebody out anyway, but I had expected them to go to Zach mm-hmm. before me entirely, like. I didn't think people saw me at that stage because, you know, no one was really talking to me. Mm-hmm. And, and Lewis had this perception that I would never flip, which was true. Mm-hmm. Never going to flip over to them. I already had a position of power. Like, numbers wise, there was no reason for any of us to flip. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were not thinking about flushing an idol out whatsoever. That came as a total surprise because when we were trying to figure out the idol clue we were just totally lost by that one word we could not figure it out uh-huh. so um i mean i was surprised that they decided to go for me and i was also surprised that um that they decided to um that that you know they didn't put because okay sorry it's like okay. a lot yeah. going through my mind mm-hmm. but i had a hundred percent intended at the beginning of this game to do a girls alliance. Like that mm-hmm. was something that I really wanted to do. And I, and once I met Liv, I was like, Oh my God, we see each other eye to eye on everything strategically. Like we do a great job of like figuring out what moves to make. Like I would think of moves and she would help me like frame them in a consumable format to other people. And then, you know, after meeting Rachel and who Rachel is a, was a strong player in her own right, but she just, I think her ego got in the way of herself Mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why she was so like bitter after she got voted out and being on Ponderosa. Cause I think she saw herself making it a lot farther than she actually ended up making it. Mm -hmm. But you know, once we had to vote Hannah out, it was kind of, it sucks because it was like, okay, well, that's the death of that now. Like, yeah. because if you don't have four people, you know, for Girls Alliance, it's just not, it's not feasible. there just wasn't a way to make it happen. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I, I that was totally out of left field. I mean, we, the reason we switched the vote to Hannah was because Liv said to Hannah, like, who do I need to protect you from? And for some reason, that made Liv really suspicious. Mm -hmm. And with me, what happened was, and I talked about this a little bit um, at the reunion, but Hannah, and I don't know what her mentality was about it, Mm -hmm. um, but she was not, like, I think a part of what I was so proud of in my own game was that I was about, like, 
able to give, like strategically give people information that was true, but wouldn't help them. Mm -hmm. So it felt like I was being reciprocal, like reciprocating trust really well and reciprocating information, which is what helps build trust with Hannah. Like she was, you know, doing the same thing as I was in the sense that she wasn't, um, she wasn't like giving me any information that I could use and, Mm -hmm. you know, basically just being really nice and sort of gave me this vibe of like, I was being interviewed for information, but I feel like if she had just given me information that was, that I could trust, that wasn't necessarily information that would have, you know, been useful to me. Mm -hmm. As I was doing to her, I mean, I was giving her all this information and she was saying that I was lying, but I wasn't lying. Yeah. It was my perception of what might happen at the merge at the time. So for me, it was kind of like, okay, well, you know, if you had made me feel just a little bit more comfortable, then I wouldn't have gotten suspicious of you. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't getting any information out of her. I felt like I was being interviewed, which is not a how you want to make someone feel when yeah. you're trying to build trust with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I think if she had pushed that a little bit more, like we would have been, um, we would have, and, and it's a good thing I didn't talk to her afterwards either, because I felt so bad about having to vote her out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been bad. I, because that was where the ghosting really, that was when it was super effective for me uh-huh. because I felt that if I talked to her, I would have given a hint that it was her mm-hmm. basically. And then if she had, then and, you would have gone home. Yeah. She was definitely more of a game bot than me. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't think she would have had any, problem with taking that information and just using it to her benefit versus me if they had said like said to me oh like we're voting you and i had an idol i mean i i don't think i would have written hannah's name down like Mm -hmm. i would have been like well she told me so why am i gonna vote her out like that was that was really kind and honest of her to do Mm -hmm. and i can trust that so i want to keep someone like that around so Yeah, that was that's my perception of what went down with that vote. <laughs> okay, nice, definitely, definitely, because I, I think a lot of people in the spec lounge, at least, were were not a hundred percent sure what went down. So I'm glad we got some some clarification on that round yeah. and everything that happened there. Uh, yeah. One more like big thing, big part of the game I wanted to talk about uh, was probably the biggest part of the game, uh, something that you had a role in. Uh, Lewis flipping after the rock draw. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us like? you know how that kind of came about did, did lewis approach you did you approach lewis what happened with that whole situation and him flipping and what was your role right in it? okay so i knew from being at post swap mia scene that lewis was going to be the biggest threat mm-hmm. because i i regardless of whether he was trying to vote me out i still felt comfortable with lewis as a human just yeah. as a person mm-hmm. and you know we had made jokes together and we were on the heroes challenge together and, you know, we're hyping each other up and stuff. And, um, the, he had already tried to vote me out. So I knew that he was going to be someone I had to watch out for in the merge. And I knew that he was going to have the influence to, um, potentially get me voted out come the merge Mm -hmm. after that vote happened. And I actually did not want to vote Lewis in that vote. Uh-huh. Um, but <laughs> I still think that Jonathan would have been a much better choice because, mm-hmm. I mean, Jonathan would have been the least likely person to get that um, idol. Yeah, definitely. But And then Lewis would have been, you know, potentially, he, he would have been subject to rocks. Mm-hmm. So we might have had a better chance of getting him out. But after that vote, I always, I never felt like I couldn't work with Lewis. It just, we were on opposing sides at, you know, post-swap Miocene. And then again, when we first merged. But, you know, he, I I had intended to have a conversation with him after that rock vote prior to him coming to me. And if you look, I mean, you can't look because it's NPMs, but Mm -hmm, I'll I'll screenshot it later. But I mean, 
I literally wrote Lewis in the chat and then he popped out a whole paragraph. <laughs> so it was so like, thinking the same thing at the same time, essentially. Was, exactly. And I think he knew that I would have the mo the best chance of trying to get him voted out because he tried to vote me out mm -hmm. and I knew he was a huge threat. So, and he knew that I was a huge social threat. So he knew I would have a lot of like clout, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of influence over the vote. And um, he, I think he, he was more worried. He was worried about the fact that he was five, but he was also more worried about the fact that I would be able to get him voted out than he was about, um, than he was necessarily comfortable with me, if you know, if you yeah. can understand. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, true. you know, it ended up coming in clutch for me mm -hmm. entirely because he, um, he and I became extremely close allies. Mm -hmm. And I felt terrible when I ended up having to vote him out. Like, honestly, it was, it, it's funny because everybody, everyone was like Celine pandering for Lewis's vote. It, it's funny because people say this is pandering. And this is why when I was in final tribal council and I said that cheesy stuff about how like it's a personal game and I don't like voting people out. I wrote at the end, I was like, I, you know, I'm sorry if this seems like a silly answer. It's, but it's on the God's honest truth, truth about how I feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, I genuinely felt that way as well. When we had to vote him out, I was like, Oh my God, like, He's going to hate me. He's going to think everything that we like all our conversations were a lie that I was just trying to get information out of him and all this stuff. So, I mean, with Lewis, I just think that we were both, you know, threats and it's not always a bad thing for threats to come together and work together. Mm -hmm. um, the only problem is, is literally what happened with Liv. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, Liv was basically. a threat too in uh -huh. her own right. And that's why I wanted to work with her. But it's also exactly why I didn't see it coming when she tried to vote me out. Mm -hmm. And Lewis being a threat, I mean, me being a threat, you know, meat shield. You want some other people there who are a bigger target than you when it gets later on in the game, which is why Jonathan was also someone who needed to go early. Mm hmm. I think he had less of an influence over the vote than Andrew did because Andrew was so paranoid, like 3000% of the time that like just his paranoia and anxiety, while not fueled by like gameplay and strategic, like thoughtfulness had an impact on the vote mm -hmm. several times. So he had, he had more weight than you know, someone like Jonathan did. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, they say stuff like, oh, no goats, no goats, no goats. But I mean, to me, that wasn't necessarily part of it as much as it was like, we just need to keep people around who are bigger threats than us or else like, it's not going to be, it's going to be um, too easy come later in the game, yeah. come like final four, final five. Yeah. Mm hmm. So, yeah, no, as far sense. as it goes, yeah, I do think it was both of us. I think I, you know, I, it was a huge part of the reason why he came over to us was because I was able to make him feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to, like, he could have thought that I was lying to him, but I was able to make these people feel comfortable with me. Mm -hmm. And that, that was my biggest asset in the entire game was just an ability to make people feel comfortable with me or not everyone, but just the people that I wanted to feel comfortable with, yeah. me, comfortable with me. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. All right. Uh, and so when from this game and from all of these, these weeks you've played, not exactly 39 days, but uh, what, what close did enough. you close enough? Yeah, exactly. Felt like 39 <laughs> days. What, yeah. what did you take away from the game it just in general that you might be able maybe apply to your real life or maybe apply to whatever you go on to do. Oh my God. Well, number one, when I'm sus of people, I'm not crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like in real life, like when people give me bad vibes, sometimes I'm like, I'm just being paranoid. I just have anxiety. Like, why do I care? Why do I, you know, do this to myself? But time and time again in life, it's been proven to me. And now, especially like, 
on a microscopic level in this game has been proven to me because Liv made me sus several times. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just at that point. It was a, it was, there were several factors when it came to Liv as to why I felt it necessary for her to go. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just that she had made a final three with Andy on or final two with Andy on the second or third day. It wasn't just that she had lied so easily and so well to me. It was also when we were at Mia scene um, and I pointed this out to her several times. I saw you talking on the chat to someone and I saw Lewis talking to someone mm -hmm. on the chat <laughs> and neither of you were talking to me. So, you mm -hmm. know, that made me sus immediately. And, um, you know, back at, at even at OG Petit, I mean, there were just several situations where um, I got the same vibe from Liv that I got from Hannah, where I didn't feel like she was interviewing me, but I felt like she was being very, um, I, fake is not the right word. I don't think she was being fake, but I do think she was being very, um, like disingenuous about how she truly felt in order to build trust. Uh huh. If you understand yeah, what I'm saying, that like, makes sense. You know, like always, pan like not. I don't like the word pandering, but just like pandering to what she could sense my feeling was mm -hmm. versus like genuinely giving me her honest and true feelings about what she felt about a certain situation or like even just anything in, in regular conversation, mm -hmm. like just talking about, you know, shooting the shit, whatever, talking about whatever. Like I definitely felt like she was um, consistently trying to make me feel comfortable. And mm -hmm. I, but I noticed it. It wasn't something that like, I felt went unnoticed by me, but it went unnoticed by her that it was noticed by me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I get it. Yeah. So yeah, if I were to take anything from the game, it's that when I'm suspicious of people, I'm not crazy. You're not. Exactly. Exactly. You got to <laughs> trust yourself a little more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. definitely. And, and I am as self-aware as I thought I was. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Good things to Which take away. Which is probably why James thought I was paranoid. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think I think being self aware comes off as being paranoid sometimes, but mm -hmm. you know, what can you do? Yeah, what not can everyone's you do? gonna like you. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, and and then one final thing, kind of to ask. So for next season, it is All Stars, as it has been made known. Who do you think from mm -hmm. your cast? could be or deserves to be on all stars and do you think you deserve to be on all stars oh well i mean obviously andy mm -hmm. <laughs> but that i mean he's already got a spot so that's a pop out mm -hmm. um i think i think i think lewis would be a great person to have on all stars honestly that guy is an incredible player mm -hmm. like on all accounts he's a great social player he's a really cool guy He's very intelligent. He was able to find an immunity idol. I mean, he never was able to necessarily mitigate his threat level. But when you have an all-star season, it's kind of like, well, everybody's a threat. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what's the point in mitigating shit? Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as I go, um, yeah, I think I would do great on all-stars. And I think uh, the reason why I think that is because... I do think I have a really great ability of getting people to uh, be their genuine selves with me. Mm -hmm. And I also have a lot more influence over people than I sometimes give myself credit for. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like I'd be good at, on All Stars because I don't necessarily need to lie to people to make it to the end which is really hard you know it was hard it was super hard not to you know to to not just give people tell people what they want to hear and um make it to the end so i feel like in that way i sort of changed the perception of emotional players from what they used to be which is basically dawn mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> to to you know um 
someone who, while emotional, is using emotion strategically mm -hmm. and and um, able to pick up on things quickly without i mean there was of course with lip like i didn't pick up on that at all uh -huh. so you can fault me for that but i you know i still think i i trust my perception of people i trust my reads of people and i think like in life i have a lot of really awesome cool people as friends and i'm like constantly surprised that these people want to be friends with me but um, I think a part of it is because I'm pretty good at reading people. And like, that's something that could be, be very interesting to watch, mm -hmm. I think, in an yeah. all-star season. So <laughs> that's my little argument for why I should go. But yeah, Lewis would be great. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, Liv would be great. Um, Liv's a really perceptive player. Mm -hmm. uh, She's she in her own right. She's very good, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to like fault her for like the choices that she made, um, because it is just a game, mm -hmm. and there's no million dollars. But uh, I think that that people underestimate like what honesty can do in a social game like this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if she had come to us and said, look, I'm really paranoid and I made this mistake, which I don't th – now that I've read through Ponderos and now that I've read through um, her confessional channel, I don't necessarily think it was a mistake. I think it was just a poorly <laughs> manufactured plan. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think her paranoia came later when she was being found out. Yeah. Um, and I think if she had just come to us, even if it was false, even if it, if it was disingenuous to her, if she had come to us and said, look, I got really paranoid and I did this, I'm so sorry, like she would have had a way, way, way better chance of staying in our regard because mm -hmm. after she lied and lied and lied about it, she made herself look like an incredible, like an incredibly crafty person and an unbelievable liar. Mm -hmm, I feel like, yeah. So, I mean, like she made her threat level go way up with that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if she had come to us and be like, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm paranoid. Like I would have thought to myself, oh, well, first of all, this girl got paranoid when we had the numbers. Like she doesn't know what she's doing. And then I would have been, you know, I would have thought to myself like, oh, she was honest with me. She came to me. She told me the truth. Like. I respect that. Mm -hmm. And that would have helped her later in the game because then she could have potentially, um, you know, put together a hit against me again later yeah. on. So for, I think she, I think she would be great on all stars. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say Lewis and Liv and obviously Andy and obviously myself. Uh -huh. but... Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So that's what I think. Okay. Yeah. Obviously I can't comment on anything. But uh, me and <laughs> me and the uh, the big Jeff Probst, who you saw for a short part of the season, will be for the rules. Yeah, for the rules, basically, and and who <laughs> casted you guys? We'll 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 be discussing stuff uh, in the uh -huh. future. It probably will not be for a little bit because he would wants to be around for when it happens. When is the All Star season supposed to start? I'm not 100% sure yet, basically. It will probably be either spring or even as late as summer, depending on when Jeff Probst is available. Okay. Uh, but I'm sure when we know, we can kind of give a timeline. But so he's going to be the host, probably? Yeah, he'll, he'll be there. He'll oh, be there. my God. He'll be the big host. If I'm there, that'll be exciting. But even as a spectator, that'll be fun to watch. Mm-hmm, Definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, so is there anything else you want to add or anything else you want to say to anybody watching uh, that you feel like you haven't said yet? Um, well, I want to say to Rachel, first of all, um, she's calling me passive aggressive a couple of times. Um, I want to say, first of all, I was not attempting to be passive aggressive. I was trying to be upfront. Um, I think she's probably referring to the fact that I 
said I would have removed her as a juror, um, which was not – in my intention was not to be passive-aggressive. My intention was to be totally honest. And mm-hmm. so, like, I wasn't trying to be passive-aggressive. I was just trying to say I don't like the way that you have – treated me and other people Mm -hmm. um and i am gonna let you know to your face um and if she wants to have a conversation with me later i'm open to that um but it seems like every day we seem to um increase the gap between us Uh if you will uh which is just fine with me as well and then also I want to say to um, everyone, I want to say, I would like, or everyone on the jury, I would like everyone on the jury to at least reflect on my game and really ask themselves, like, whether or not, like, because I feel like I do, you know, 100% stand my strategy Mm -hmm. of, making people feel comfortable and not lying to them. Mm -hmm. And I know that this is in the survivor world, especially on our survivor. uh, It's looked down upon quite a bit because it's sort of the opposite of being a game bot. Mm -hmm. But like, I definitely feel that it, it, it's a really interesting. And I mean, in my own right, I think it's a pretty genius way to play. Like, because people don't get pissed off at you. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, the intention was that people would not get pissed yeah, off Yeah, the me. intention. And I thought that that was good jury management. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, other people have their opinions on what good jury management was, but I was not expecting them to take my answers at tribal council as what would influence them on whether I was managing them well yeah. or not. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, I'm sorry. What was the question? Uh, just anything else you wanted to add? Oh yeah. So I I I do urge other the rest of the jury to just look back at my game and really ask themselves. Um, because I I I think Andy played an incredible game and I think he deserved to win. But I think I played just as great of a game as Andy did. Um, and I don't want to say better because every you know winner deserves this deserves to be the winner of their season and i 100 percent stand by that Mm -hmm. Uh, but i do think i played just as good of a game as he did and i was just you know an easy target for (laughs) for frustration yeah apparently so Mm -hmm. yeah that's how i feel and that's what i want to say all right. Well, let me just say it was a pleasure having you on this season and then being able to talk to you here and kind of talk through your game. I really do appreciate it so much and appreciate you playing. Yeah. yeah I'm so happy we get to do exit interviews. That's awesome. You are the I can't first wait cast. to watch everybody's. Mm-hmm. A what? You are the first cast to ever get exit interviews like this. So. Oh, really? That's awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Well, right on. Nice. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. It's been great talking. Well, thank to you. you for... mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I should sign off then. Yeah. All right. What's up, everybody? We're back with another Armenia exit interview. Exit interview. My bad. This time, we have the winner of Survivor Armenia, the one, the only Andy slash Thwip slash whatever you want to call him. How you doing, Andy? What's up? Uh, I'm chilling. You're chilling. Good to hear. Good to hear. All right. So I I have some questions for you. I have some some stuff to ask. Of course, there's there's a lot I could ask you since I mean you won the season. Uh, right. First, I'm just gonna ask you like what what it's a few days out of the game. How does it feel to be out of it? Is it like a relief? Uh, cause I know everybody was really active and playing hard. So is it like a relief to just be out of it and be able to chill? Or is it like you kind of miss it? What's the the feelings there? Um, yeah, I mean, it's nice to relax, definitely. Um, I like the camaraderie we have after the season. Like, everyone's still, like, chatting with each other and stuff, which is fun. Mm-hmm. 
and that doesn't usually like a different experience than other orgs because like everybody else was a newbie so they're all like excited to be a part of things now so it's like it's fun the armenia chat on the hub is blowing up and everything but yeah no it's been nice i'm just like I know every time I'm, I finish an org, I'm like, well, now I can just relax my brain for a little bit. So. Exactly. You can get yeah. that much needed rest. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I will say the Armenia ch- chat definitely, it's its definitely different from, from other org experiences. Everybody's just chilling here. Everybody's having a good time. Uh, I think there's just something about newbies. In your first org, it's just like, everybody just wants to chill. I think some people thought... Boar was actually Jeff Probst at the beginning, which I found. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if that's a hundred percent true, but it, I felt like some people thought that, and I was like, "Ooh, I don't want." It. I'm sure. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I. I did just felt like I. I might be wrong there, but I. That's it's just funny to me because he has. He has everything as Jeff Probst. I mean, I, I can mean, make the mistake. There were some fun misconceptions along the way, so I would not be that shocked. What kind of misconceptions? were there if you can say sure. <laughs> i mean the first thing that comes to mind was reading that uh during the swap Jono thought that he clicked on chumbo's name to get oh. him to swap with him <laughs> which i thought was hilarious i remember that oh uh, good old jonathan i love that guy mm-hmm. yeah there's some there's some funny stuff that comes with being new new to discord um uh, yeah uh so that that's good then you're you're rest in your brain a little bit just chatting with everybody i think it's a good time uh i want to start talking about kind of uh the pre-merge and you went to what two tribals pre-merge yeah just yeah two. yeah and in those two tribals you pretty much dominated the tribes you were on i mean you you were in an alliance with everybody but tobias on your original tribe i i believe and then on your right. swap tribe you you swapped with two of the people on the bottom and then and then andrew and then somehow you got the uh, the people who swapped with you you got like chumbo and them to vote with you instead of the people on the bottom can you just talk about like <laughs> how how you did all this how you like just kind of ran these tribes starting with like the first tribal uh where you know everything went from zero to a hundred real quick right sure okay so well, I mean, I would disagree that I dominated the first tribal <laughs> because I mostly, I mean, I was in a, probably a, the best spot on that tribe, but I, but I also spent the entire first tribal just trying to not make enemies mm-hmm. <laughs> because, like, you know, I was in with everybody pretty much. Like, Tobias I wasn't in an alliance with, but <laughs> he, w- he had me as his number one, which I was blown away by after the season. But, um, I mean, I think... I'm, I, it is just a lot easier. I mean, I'm a pure, I am a mostly purely social player. Like, I have a decent strategic sense, but like, when I, um, you know, I always, I always base my game and be, and social. So, like, when you're practiced and being a social player and you get put on a tribe with a bunch of people who have never played before, it's, like not the hardest thing in the world Mm -hmm. (laughs) to find at least a good like a spot that won't get you voted out yeah but my i mean my strategy which from the beginning i didn't want to play too hard so my strategy was just um talk to everybody Mm -hmm. and make them like like be a jokey guy be someone people feel comfortable around and then they'll come to you with shit and that's pretty much what happened um like i just talk to everyone related to them and then like people rolled up to me with alliances um mm-hmm. which i happily took but also made it a little hard to made me have to make some enemies early yeah because you had so many ties you had to you had to hurt some of them with a with a vote unless right. it was exactly. Tobias, I guess, but it didn't end up being that so so what was c- kind of the scrambling that was happening that first vote when you're in an alliance with everybody but tobias one side says, "Hey, let's get rid of what was it, Andrew or Liv?" And then the other side says, "Hey, let's uh, let's get rid of uh, 
James and then Jack. What what are you you thinking in that moment? Like what hmm. what's happening there? Well, yeah, I had to figure out my priority, who my priorities were pretty fast. Um because the alliance that popped up first was with James and Jack. And at the time, um, it was like day two or something, and I hadn't like talked a ton to the other people except mm-hmm. for Liv. And they were like, well, we can bring in Liv too. So I was like, okay, maybe we can roll with this. And then <laughs> suddenly I'm in a five person with <laughs> nobody, with neither of them. And so you have to shift priorities. And mm-hmm. when, when that, I, I knew that it, whenever it went to tribal, I was going to end up where I ended up in that spot where I was going to have to pick a side and then figure out how to not burn the people who weren't on that side. And, um, <laughs> I mean, I just, the easiest thing to do there is just to pick one and, and and tell them you're all in on it and then just, like, try and manage the other guys and get them to vote for the person that that side is voting for, which was my goal. Didn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, I wanted, like, the whole time I was talking to Tobias, I wanted to get him to vote for, for Jack, you know, or James, one of them. So when uh, I just went into game mode, basically, I was like, this, this is going to suck if it doesn't work, but I just need to work really hard on making them all believe I'm with them to the point where they all vote for the same person. Didn't work, but yeah, that was, my, that was the plan. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. And then, so then that vote happens, uh, you vote out, uh, Jack, obviously, and then you get swapped to try with. Two people you just voted against in uh uh it was Tobias and uh James. James. Yeah. yeah, and then so then how do you maneuver your way with the the people from Myosin? What however you say it, how do you maneuver your way into getting in good with them and having them vote out someone on the bottom in Tobias? How does how how did you do that that right? Well, I I knew straight off the bat that I was going to just ditch those guys, mm-hmm. which is what made it much easier, is that, like, even Andrew I didn't care about. Like, no yeah. offense, yeah, we, got cl- we got tight after that, but, like, at the time, I didn't really, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I just, he wasn't, wasn't up there on my trust rankings or anything. Yeah. So I was just, like, it doesn't matter if, if I hitch myself onto these three and we vote out the other three, I'm not going to be broken up about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, yeah, it's basically what I did. I was like, m- when I did that, my mindset was just, I'm going to make these guys think that I don't care about the other guys, which is easy because I don't. Yeah, <laughs> and, exactly. Um, and yeah, so I just went to all three of them straight off the bat, started chatting them up. Um, me and Chumbo got a really good rapport early to the point where I didn't even, like, say, well, I was like, you know, I feel like a free agent and everything. He was like, well, if you uh, wanted to hitch on to us three, then we could go far. And I was like, <laughs> sounds good. And and that was really lucky because Chumbo saying that to me first meant that he was going to, you know, Either he had talked about it with the other people or he was going to say to them that, like, he offered it. And it sounds a lot better when um, it's coming from your ally instead of the guy who you don't, who has questionable motives, you know? Yeah, definitely. So that was really, like, that was kind of lucky, but it was also uh, an effect of, like, how hard I was trying to make them like me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear but, you. Yeah. But the truth helped me out there, like the fact that my I wasn't really lying to them. Uh huh. Yeah, that makes sense. Sometimes saying the truth is better than lying, as we right. as we've seen this uh this season. Um. So then, do you think it was a mistake at all for um uh, for Trumbo and Rachel and them to to go for with you instead of the people like James and Tobias uh-huh. who had no one? What what? Because I've heard mixed things, mainly from people like Tobias and James, that they made a mistake <laughs> doing that. So, so what, what do you think? Um, it's hard to say. I, I think it's really tough to judge something like that. Um, I think that 
if they hadn't if they hadn't gone with us, then yeah, they probably would have ended up in a better spot down the road. But I don't know. It still would have been a really complicated merge dynamic yeah. either way. Mm-hmm. Like they would have kept, you know, going with us prevented them from having numbers, kind of because if they had voted, um, you know, if if they had Tobias and James on the side after I had after you know Tobias knew I was gunning for him, um, they vote out me instead of. And instead of uh, Tobias, then they'd probably end up with like a majority situation where they're oh, it's got all the Miazans plus those two, and then like the bottom is uh, Selin, Liv, Zach, and Andrew, and and then so you could say that that's probably a better position for them, but I don't know. It, it it's a there's a lot involved in that kind of yeah, it's all judgment. theoretical. It, so I, I mean, yeah, I, it, I mean, it helped me a lot, obviously. Yeah, of course, but, of course. But there's just so much to judge. So I would personally say that in a vacuum, in terms of them maintaining power and merge, they probably should not have gone with us. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not cut and dry, you know. Yeah, of course. There's always different factors that could play into it, and you can never really say unless it actually happens. Right. So that yeah, that makes sense. Uh, all right. Then so we go on from the pre-merge tribals, and we get to the merge, and it's this big, chaotic potential rock draw. What was just going through your head all through the merge? What were you trying to have happen? And then were you expecting rocks? Were you expecting the outcome? And just what was going through your head that cycle basically that cycle Mm -hmm. um no i was not expecting rocks i up until i saw the votes i did not think it was gonna tie i honestly i thought that james was voting with us which at the you know now seems dumb Mm -hmm. to to look (laughs) back after i burned him twice in a row like there's no reason he should have sided with us and, Mm -hmm. and he did he made the correct move but um, but no. At the time, I thought we were sending Lewis home. Like I thought that I was gonna have to apologize to the people from our swap tribe after that, and then it <laughs> tied, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> oh shit! Yep. Like here we go again. Yep. Yep. And I, there was, you know, as soon as it tied, there was no way I was not going personally to rocks. Like yeah. straight away, I was like. If this is how I go, it's how I go. I get to watch the rest of the season, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm, exactly. Like, this is it, this is it. Right, but it, made, it would have made no sense for me to flip in that situation. Yeah, of course. And just, like, kind of give people yeah. the other side I, of the I was super nervous Liv was going to flip, though, which I said in confessionals, but... She, yeah, she like said like one or two things in tribal. If, if actually, I don't think she said anything. She might have said like one comment, uh-huh. and then never spoke again in tribal and didn't vote. And and I was like, yeah, she she does not want to get rocked out. Mm-hmm. Which I think I was right, but yeah, in the end, I I kind of knew that there was no way she would not go to rocks because that would have been like the chance that she got rocked out in tenth was better than her chances if she flipped yeah I feel. exactly and that was that went for pretty much everybody mm-hmm. so everybody just decided like hey this however percentage of a chance you know it, it might not look good but it's better than if we just yeah. give them all the power yeah it's really funny how that worked out because uh, i think that it was everybody's correct decision not to flip on rocks but i also think that it was the correct decision for lewis to flip at nine so it's really weird because those like don't tend to go together yeah so 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 what do you what do you think about lewis flipping at at nine did you have any any part in that or was that Selin and uh, no. mainly? Uh, okay. i was completely uninvolved i <laughs> Yeah, I I just they were working their magic, and I was like totally skeptical to the point where I was, I think I, I'll, I'll also probably actively accidentally working against our chances for a little bit there mm-hmm. at that vote because Andrew and I were so skeptical. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But no, I think like I was I've been talking to Lewis after the season and I think that Lewis pretty much from the moment where he misplayed his idol was in a spot where he barely had any chance of winning the season. Like, Mm -hmm. and it had nothing to do with how well he had played or anything. He just was on the wrong side of the numbers. And then when he was on the right side of the numbers, he was still on the wrong side of the numbers down the road. And Mm -hmm. his flip was correct, in my opinion. Um, It's hard to say that it would have been a good idea for him to stick with those people because they probably would have just picked him off for being a challenge threat. Yeah, exactly. Um, in between Pagongs, you know, and mm-hmm. and he just like it's so tough to maneuver that season for him, especially in a season with no idols. He's just sitting there, like it, it, he both. I mean, nobody wants him at the end because he's a challenge threat and he's like so smart and cunning. But then at the same time, everyone on the jury is bitter at him. Yeah, it's for, like. Hmm. He can't. He like he just he can't couldn't win, win either way, which yeah. really sucked. It really sucked for him. Yeah, that that is actually something I was I was interested in because when you guys were voting Lewis out, everyone was like, "Lewis, you're too big of a threat, man. Your time was coming." And then on the jury, everyone's like, "Fuck Lewis! I hate this guy. He flipped on me. Fuck him." Yeah. And so it's yeah. like, huh? There's a very a very big disconnect from you know him being a threat in the game, which obviously he was as a challenge threat, to the jury absolutely hating him because he flipped sure mm-hmm. yeah yeah it, in, in terms of lewis when we voted him out like i i wanted him out because the more immunities he won the harder it was for me to get myself to the end not mm-hmm. not not because i like i felt that i probably would have beat him in the final two but that would never happen <laughs> like yeah, there's exactly. no chance that he, he and i were the final two mm-hmm. so that makes sense so just furthering your path. Yeah, I see that. And so uh, after the Lewis flip, you kind of I uh, you kind of pick off the other side, and then you kind of get your way perfectly for these next two votes in final six and final five, getting Jonathan and Lewis out. Can you can you kind of explain those two votes? Because I feel like that was like. Those two rounds are where you absolutely sealed your place in final tribal council. Yeah, you sealed your that, domination. Yeah, you can say I don't know. I can praise anything about the rest of my game, but final six and five were where I was really playing the game. Like those were the points where I needed to get something done exactly how I wanted it to get done, or I was probably not going to win, and and I did. So like <laughs> at that point. I, I'm a, I'm pretty anti goat like as a philosophy because I don't play like one generally, mm-hmm. and so the more goats in the game, the harder it is for me to win. So and Jonathan was actively targeting me. Yeah, N- not you know, and, and I wanted him out before he started targeting me. So it was really more like I knew that there was no way that I would ever pull a move with him. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I had three people who I was confident would take me to the end. Mm-hmm. So Jonathan and Lewis was immune. <laughs> yeah, of but course. Lewis was immune, and also, uh, you know, the later it gets, the easier it is to try and convince Celine to vote him out. But mm-hmm. yeah, so Jonathan was just the prime target at that point because another thing with this season is that. Um, if the vote was unanimous, uh, then that was good for me because it, my whole game was about concealing my game. And so if somebody gets blindsided by a vote, then suddenly they're questioning if I'm what I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. And so the Jonathan vote was monumental, but also getting all the votes on him was equally monumental mm-hmm. um, at the time. But he was, Jonathan, while well, he was less a victim of circumstance because he did have opportunities to, to find a good spot, but, but he, he just didn't do anything right, you know? Yeah, and I no, You know, no, nothing against the guy, but everything he tried failed, and it was because he never had any support for anything he tried. 
Like he would mm-hmm. try things before he realized that they were not viable options. Uh-huh. Um, so that also contributed to him going is that, I don't know, nobody really felt that he was incredibly useful to them, I feel. Uh-huh. Yeah, I hear that. And then the Lewis vote. What, how do you convince Selin to get rid of Lewis there, who at that point she probably wanted to take to final three with you guys or something like that? I believe, yeah. I mean, I don't know if Selin knew necessarily what, what her final three was at that point. Yeah. She and I had agreed on Andrew. Um, oh, okay, okay. But, um, yeah, I knew, I mean... Going into final five, like, because the only way Andrew agreed to vote Jono was by me promising him I would be willing to blindside Selin with a Lewis vote next mm-hmm. time, which I wanted Lewis out anyway, but there was no way I was going to blindside Selin with any vote. Um, yeah, of course. So I knew that I needed to convince her, but I also felt that I would be able to because the thing was that Lewis was such a comp threat that any anybody has that staring them in the face. Like, if I'm like, listen, he's immune right now. He, that may not ever be true again. Mm-hmm. And, and that on its own is such a powerful argument, especially when you're talking to somebody who is your mutual final two. Like, because yeah, if Lewis wins the season out, then neither of us can take each other to the end. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I felt that I would be able to achieve that. And... She said that the reason why she bent was because she thought that I was losing trust in her, which was not the case. I, or I never like wavered on trusting her or anything, but I guess like I was trying one thing, but she was convinced by another thing, kind of. Uh-huh. Like I wanted her to vote Lewis, but she like made up her mind based on something that I didn't intend to do. So, mm-hmm. it like, I, yeah, it works out in the end, but my, my strategy isn't necessarily what convinced her, but, and yeah, another, uh, I had a hard time with that at final tribal because, um, I wanted to use the argument that I made mo- votes unanimous on purpose so that I wouldn't, my game wouldn't get exposed, but also like, that was less important because I already had two locked votes or three locked votes for Lewis, and I just wanted to not blindside my ride or die, you know? Yeah, of course. You don't want to do that. It just cause so, problems. Right. Like, probably would lose me the game. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially how much Solid is against, like, lying and that kind of stuff. Probably would not be good. No. Oh. Yeah. But then you, you take out Jonathan and Lewis back to back, and you're in a spot where. Everybody, everybody there will take you to the end. Did you ever have a thought at that final three that, what if I just throw this challenge? Or did you just really want to get to the end with Saloon? Well, I knew Chumbo was going to win the game if he got there. Oh, I see. So So you knew Chumbo's threat level, which you you would be correct. Yeah, I, I mean... As soon as I realized, once we voted out Andrew, that we could have two on one Chumbo, I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, and th- that, that four vote, that's, that, that was definitely interesting. So can you, I, I forgot I missed that. Can you go back to the, the final four vote and just talk about, like, from your perspective, what happened there? Because it was kind of like back and forth. Like, we thought it would go to fire, and then it didn't go to fire. What yeah. was happening? Well, I mean, it went really fast, but Mm -hmm. basically, Andrew, I was worried about it beforehand. And when Andrew came to me and said, I want to vote, he, I believe, not necessarily verbatim, but what he said was, want to have some fun with this? That was his first message to me after the challenge. And I was like, I know exactly what this means, and I hate it. (laughs) So Not I was good. like, great. So he was like, yeah, one of the that's uh, And I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> and he was like, all right, I figured you wouldn't. Um, I'm going to vote for her. And we can send her to fire. And like, you can pretend like you didn't know. And I was like, yeah, no. Yeah, um, that happened. Like, it, that was worst case scenario uh-huh. for me. Like, if, if Selene lost fire to someone, then 
I was super fucked um, because that would mean that I had voted for someone who was still in the game and it was final three. Yeah. So I would have to, yeah. have to win final immunity, which I, in the end, it, I, in the end, it probably didn't matter in terms of me winning the game, what happened at final four, because I would have won final immunity probably regardless. Uh-huh. But like it ended the way I wanted to. At least, because I didn't do dumb shit there. Well, I did do dumb shit, but we well, we just we voted out Andrew so quickly, and we should have. I should have been like, okay, let's take a half hour to think about this, and I didn't. Um, and we really should have just two one one, Jumbo. Mm-hmm. But it, you know, because that I could never throw that final three challenge because if Jumbo was like, if if we had voted out Jumbo. I could have thrown it because they both take me, but nah, Chumbo in the final two yeah. is an L for anybody. Oh yeah, and y- you were correct in that assumption. The jury was just like, we called it the Chumbo cult in the spectator lounge. They, <laughs> it it would have been six one with anybody he goes up against with, or six one seven L maybe in some other cases. The jury loved Chumbo. <laughs> Why, why do you think that was? Was he just like super charismatic? Because it didn't seem like from the outside looking in, he made a whole lot of game moves or had a whole lot of control. So what right. was it? Just like his his social game was really good. What oh was yeah, so Chumbo so had an awesome social game. Mm-hmm. Like you talk, I mean, I loved the guy within probably six messages of meeting him. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like he, yeah, he he was a great social player. Probably not a very good strategic player. But the thing was, he knew that. Like, it yeah. wasn't like he was pretending to be some big strategic threat. Yeah. He was just, like, because he was going to take me to the fucking end from uh-huh. final, yeah. like, uh, you know? <laughs> he, mm-hmm. he wasn't exactly trying to finagle shit. So, it, in, in the end, it's them loving him that much. is just a credit to how good of a social game he has. Um, mm-hmm. And also, you know, underdog syndrome plus the fact that um he didn't vote anybody out really like yep. I, I mean he voted with us at those last two like but every vote where he voted someone out after the lewis flip like every juror was going to be like well he did it to survive mm-hmm. um so yeah and it was funny reading this back lounge back because i somebody had mentioned that like the disconnect between spec opinion of how people were playing and juror opinion in terms of chumbo Mm -hmm. was so different but no i think that people often um don't give enough stock to social game Mm -hmm. and i think that while i would say that chumbo's strategic game was not good like the social the social aspects people win seasons based off of that and it's not something that should be overlooked yeah definitely chumbo was a a very strong player and even if the spectator lounge thinks, oh, hey, this guy's not making a lot of good strategic moves. Even if they think that, it doesn't matter what they think if the jury thinks something completely different. Exactly. So it's just a matter of how you play the game. And Chumbo, obviously, if he could have won a challenge, it could have very well won the season. So yep. everybody got to give stock to that. Definitely. Uh, Yeah, and so then you, of course, eventually win Final 3 immunity easily, might I add. I mean, <laughs> you d- didn't even need to get to the unscramble. It didn't matter. Uh, and so you I'm take... I'm fucking glad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know how long that would have taken, to be honest. I was hoping, because I had t- in, in testing it, there were a few spectators who got got it, like, instantly. Like, uh, even, like, uh, when I gave it afterwards, James got in his confessionals instantly, so I think it would have been hit or miss who would have actually finished yeah. it <laughs> so i'm kind of glad it didn't have to get to that uh but yeah you won all five of them first place chumbo got second in most of them but it wasn't enough um uh, you take selin obviously i i can't i don't even need to ask if there was any doubt in your mind you take selin over chumbo of yeah course, of course no no sane person takes chumbo there and so you get to right. the final two and so you're preparing your speech you're getting ready for the jury. What do you what are you expecting going into final tribal council versus like what actually happens? Oh man. Uh I'll just say I was shocked. Like mm-hmm. I knew that people there would be people who would be unhappy with Selin, specifically Rachel and <laughs> but Yeah. But 
I did not think it was going to be as bad as it was mm-hmm. I, at all. Um, I was really surprised by how much they were just ragging on her. And, I, and from my point of view, I mean, Selene, you know, you can say I played the better game, but Selene and I played very similar aligned games and we made all the same moves together. So mm-hmm. it was like, just to see her getting pounded for such bullshit that didn't matter i was like is this really happening yeah yeah it was definitely definitely tough to watch uh it was it it was pretty interesting we in the spec launch we had an over under of how many times you would step in and tell them to stop being asked yeah. whatever. Jeez. Uh but but yeah, it was it was not it was not fun to watch. And and then mm. eventually, you know, as Final Travel C- Council goes on, Selene keeps getting asked questions and they keep hammering her and eventually she starts turning some votes. What did you think like towards the end of Final Travel Council when people <laughs> start to say like, "Oh, I kind of changed my mind." What are you thinking Bro. then? I thought it was over. I thought I lost like straight up. I I thought like what I dipped for three hours to play D and D. Yeah, <laughs> I check yeah. in once. Like I was trying to do both at once, and then I had like kind of a meltdown. And Hoops was like, "You should not do this. You should close Discord." And I was like, "Okay, I will." And then mm-hmm. I I like peep back for a second, and I see Chumbo making a snarky comment in FTC about how I couldn't make time for it, and I'm like, "Oh, this is fun." Oh, yeah. and, then, and then um. I get back and I see that both Rachel and Liv saying that they, or Rachel, Liv, and Chumbo all said that they, like, their mind wasn't as made up as it was. And they had all been for me. So I was like, great. Um, but, I mean, that's, I mean, what, listen, that's just a credit to how well Selene handled her beating, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, she she sat there and she didn't t- she didn't fuck like you can say she sat there and took it nah she sat there and she took everything and threw it back in their faces and like not in a disrespectful way and Definitely. it's so so hard to do that and when like like damn i i was like really impressed and but I was also shocked at how it had turned from that into people saying I had no game. So it was like, yeah, that jury, that that jury. I will say, they changed their opinion very quickly because be before like, I don't know, final four, or final five, or whatever. Everybody's ha- has has in very high on their their jury ratings, and then eventually Liv comes in and kind of starts campaigning for you. And and as we get to the final two, everyone's like. Yeah, wait a minute. Celine sucks. I forgot. And Andy's the best player ever. And then, <laughs> and then, within like twelve hours of tribal council, everyone's like, "Oh wait, maybe Celine doesn't suck, and maybe Andy isn't the best player ever." It's like the jury made very little sense to us on the outside looking in. They it felt it felt like they were just changing their opinion very quickly. Uh, but so so we're with you on that one. It was it was weird, but uh, ultimately, of course, you win four three. When when that happened, what, what what do you think about the four three vote? You think it's pretty fair based on how similar yeah. your guys get? Yeah, I'm. It's hard. I mean, like Ben. I think Ben said it a few times. Like that vote had to be four three okay. either way. Like it, it was so clo- Like I personally believe it was such so close to call regardless mm-hmm. that anything but a four three would have been been wrong and like. I'm. I mean, I will say I'm shocked that that particular jury ended up actually voting for three. Yeah, um, yeah, it works. Out. But, but, but yeah. I mean, I. I mean, Salim played a monumental game. So did I. Like we both, we both controlled everything from a certain point onward, and you know, like we had the same goals and we achieved them together, and so that it, it wouldn't make a lot. Of, I mean. In that type of situation, when people are pulling basically the same amount of weight, then it comes down to such small nuances of each person's game. And, and yeah, I feel that it had to be super close. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, then what do you think, coming off of this season, what can you take away from it that you can apply to 
maybe other orgs, maybe your real life? What can you take away from your experiences and what you've learned this season? Uh, I mean, I... This was definitely the best time I've had playing an org. Like, and I, this is my 14th org, 14th survivor org. And, like, I mean, if anything, it's taught, if we're talking, like, individually, it's taught me that I don't need to kill myself over org seasons, you know? Like, mm-hmm. don't need to spend every instant of my life agonizing over this and that, um, which. You know, I did. At least I knew that, but I could, it kind of taught me how to not do that a little more. Mm-hmm. Um, because when Bor asked me, I I had no intention of playing a season anytime soon. Uh huh. Um, but I was gonna live alone for a month, and I was like, you know what? If I play this and just kind of like chill, I was like, I'll just chill and talk to people for a month. You know, that was that was how I convinced myself to play. I was like. But I may I can relax. Hopefully, I can like kind of continue to learn how to de- to not be super stressed over orgs. And I think that that's the main takeaway I have is that like I I I now actually feel like I have the capability of playing a season without having some kind without like crying once, you know? Uh huh. Yeah. Because like, there's you know. I mean, I did cry when I voted Chumbo out, but that wasn't because I was, like, emotionally stressed or anything. It was because, like, damn, what a guy, you know? You're right. Damn. Chumbo. Yeah. Yeah, I, and everybody has those moments in orgs, but I, I think it's definitely a, a big help to be able to kind of control, control yourself and not have to worry over every little thing happening in orgs i think that's yeah. a big definitely a great takeaway from and being in. i want to just say like for all newbies anyone who just starts playing orgs it's really hard to realize that it, the emotional regulation in terms of like that you just need to focus on keeping yourself mentally healthy while still playing these because it seems like a game at first which it is and it should be a game but it's so easy to get yourself so involved and it's like i mean you know, you can expect that from watching the show and everything. Everybody gets pretty upset um, over certain things in the actual game. And, and it's just like, I wish that there was always someone to just deliver a message to newbies after they play their first org. Just like giving them advice on how to not emotionally wreck themselves <laughs> over yeah. these games, you know? Because uh-huh, it's hard. It's really tough. And like, it's it's also just it's really tough not to do that and it's really tough to learn how to not do it too like it took me until this past october to actually like kind of even move toward that formula for not being so upset when things don't go well or you know just being hurt about being blindsided and that kind of thing I just think it's really important for, like, I think that all newbies, A, shouldn't hop straight back into an, another game. Um, it, it's good to give yourself at least a month in between seasons just to detox. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure that you've processed everything before you're, you're going to go in and give yourself new things to process. Um, Definitely. Because it's like it's almost like adding in a new facet of of your emotions to life, you know, mm-hmm, like because exactly. you have all the emotions that are associated with actual things that matter, and then you have these emotions that are associated with the game that doesn't matter mm-hmm. and and yeah, and so I just like for any any of our cast that listens to this, just make sure that you're treating yourself well. Mm-hmm. before you sign up for an org you know when you finish an org think to yourself do i need a few months do i need six months how, like how you know should i take some time off should i ask somebody who's more experienced about like how to cope with whatever is going on in my brain after playing a season just always keep that kind of shit in mind um so that these can stay fun you know mm-hmm. definitely but yeah you're speaking you're speaking some hard facts right there 
And if, if any newbie that is watching does is having problems, you know, coping with it or thinking about orgs, you can always come to, I'm sure, Andy. You can always yeah. come to me. Any of the any of the hosts, I'm sure Ben and Chris who hosted, definitely know how you're feeling. Uh, and just talk to people. It's it's a, it's a community where everybody's been through the same kind of thing. Everybody knows how you're feeling, and everybody can, not exactly how you're feeling, but the general idea of how you're feeling. And everybody's here to help. So that's a fantastic thing that Andy brings up because it's a hundred percent true. And we're all here to help and support each other. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Uh, mo- moving to something maybe a little less serious. Uh, all stars of course is next Let's season. Do. Who do you think from your season uh, deserves to be on all stars? Of course you are the winner of the season, so you will have a spot if you want it, but who else do you think? Um, I mean, I think highly of most people who played our season. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Wax, off, like straight off the bat, Sylvan, Chumbo, and Lewis, mm-hmm. um, all should have spots. Um, which would technically fill out, in terms of math, the entirety of our slots. But like, you could also take most people. Well, I mean, you know, everyone who was in the merge like was a solid character i feel so i think there are still options after that but no those are the three that i would say definitely deserve to to be asked and to be locks like they all played really well and um were from what i could tell pretty well received by specs too so definitely those are my easy picks and you know there are some outside picks too that if somebody said no would definitely service the season just just as well Mm -hmm. definitely yeah i think it's a very strong cast and i think uh whoever does get picked will definitely uh represent the season well uh yeah so we've been through pretty much most of the season is there anything else you kind of want to add any closing statements or anything you think that has been left unsaid in this interview that you want to make said anything else um money was robbed <laughs> and now that's about it um if i mean i if you're watching this um i don't know like hang around don't disappear cuz uh i want to be your friend that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to put it. You heard the man. Everybody stick around and be be Andy's friend. Yeah. It'll pay off. And money was indeed robbed. I will go with that. I agree. I agree. Rest, in Rest in peace. Uh but yeah, I think that's that that's everything I have. Uh it's been a real pleasure, of course, having you on the season and then being able to interview you after that. I really appreciate it. Of course. Andy, Andy, Andy. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time and, and doing this and sharing your story as the winner of the season. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I think that's all all I have. <laughs>